backslash groups. So tell me about, give me a highlight or a low light, whatever you want to uh, call it. Uh, you've already encountered many police on your journey thus far. It just kicked off just a few weeks ago uh, from Ohio, and you know, you've been publishing videos. What are people going to see if they go to coplock.org slash Mac or slash Mac hyphen tour? It's, there's a difference between the two, right? Yeah, well, coplock.org slash Mac is the overview. It has our stops, a little mission, the launch video, and coplock.org slash Mac dash tour is our content in uh, descending order. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, get the most recent post uh, by visiting Mac dash tour and then the overview at coplock.org slash Mac. But uh, our highlights, I mean, I'd say the thing for me was the very first night we got on the road, the day we left Ohio, uh, Brian and I came back to the RV with four squad cars, five cops, flashlights out they're all standing there we're like oh man here we <laughs> here go, we go. <laughs> it wasn't even 24 hours into the trip and i was like what's going on you know and uh they had a you know about an hour and a half before that we had spontaneously decided to uh go chalk the noblesville police station with uh one of the uh indianapolis cop lock founders and jen just a friend i've met uh through the internets uh that lives in noblesville which wasn't really exactly like an official stop. It was kind of just a layover mm -hmm. while we got to DeKalb to visit uh, Cop Block Network contributor Ryan Scott. And so this was a spontaneous chalking. And uh, I think a night or two before that, Brian and I had picked up some of this new liquid chalk for like a buck in Walmart. And so we wanted to give it a, uh, a you know, a, a test. And so it, it's very interesting because these things look like really big highlighters and they're called liquid chalk. And yet they give powder, you add water to them, you shake them up and then you can go chalk. And they look like a really big oversized highlighter. Well, as it turned out, and again, cops, folks can go to coplock.org uh, slash Mac dash tour, see this video. And uh, as it turns out, the cops there seem to be a little confused if that was actually liquid chalk or spray paint. <laughs> uh, I suspect that that was because one of the folks that was with us filled their chalk with a little too much water, which made it a little more runny, which mm -hmm. made it dry with like a spray painted effect. Um, I don't know exactly how they determined, either they determined it wasn't us that used that, that, you know, cause they said there was chalk and paint. And I was like, well, I'd testify that there wasn't, you know? So like mm -hmm. they, you know, they must've finally realized that it wasn't worth it or that they didn't think we were the ones using that device or object, whatever they thought put that, paint on there but it wasn't paint but you so. did the liberty on tour in the past and i recall you having some uh some real misadventures in your travels the last go around um can you bring people up to date on what those might have been it'd be hard to go through all that Mark. but just you know the, there was the the situation in down in uh, mississippi i recall and yeah, you know they were, they were all arrested in mississippi yeah they were all arrested in mississippi and then there was one in vegas um, there was one in vegas yeah there was one in vegas what about the one in palmer massachusetts uh -huh. No, I didn't get arrested in Palmer. I think that was Ian. <laughs> yeah, I got arrested in Palmer. Well, who was, um, they had some case. It was Greenville. Well, we had Green, Greenfield. Greenfield. I've had Manchester. And so it's funny that you mentioned that because what we're doing a lot of here, because it's very effective, and uh, I think it's uh, it's kind of like a, the flagship um, activism of the cop lock folks, I believe, when that's chalking the police stations. You know, it doesn't damage property. Chalk is cheap. You can spread a, a variety of messages. And uh, it also raises eyebrows in a number of ways. So, like, folks who are already onto our message like to see these things. It's kind of active. They can share them with their friends and, like, you know, break the ice in conversations. Folks who maybe aren't so onto your message see it, and they maybe start engaging you, and it gives you a chance to maybe make a connection that you didn't have, And as well as it's content for interactions with police officers. But, uh, you know, some of Liberty on Tour uh, project I was involved with several years ago I had gone to jail for some of that stuff. And my colleague here on the trip, Brian, has also been to jail for chalking a police memorial. And so it's kind of interesting, though, because in DeKalb, on one of our videos, the police came out and they were like, well, we really don't want you to chalk, but they weren't going to arrest us. And like, so it's it's really changed the uh, way. I know the police in Noblesville were upset, but they were more upset because they thought that was paint. And I just thought it was kind of funny that uh, they they were mistaken on that. Like they they did such a poor investigation into it that they didn't even come to the conclusion that it just popped <laughs> off. But uh, other than that, you know, like I did uh, 60 days in jail for chalking everything is okay and badges don't grant extra rights in a Manchester, New Hampshire jail. And now though they they may come out and give threats, it's only a facade to try to get you to leave. Um, it wasn't until I I really went to town on uh, 
police station in Wisconsin because they had arrested me this past summer where I chalked like a, a 20 foot wide, four foot all tall, like nearly a mural. <laughs> uh, then they, they decided to write me a ticket, but I probably could have beat that in court if I really cared, but I just ignored it. So it's really changed. What so are the I, results I think... of ignoring a ticket for chalking? Get a warrant What's at some that? point. What are the results of ignoring a ticket for chalking? Well, that's kind of funny. I asked them that. And so it was just a city ordinance. So it's not like a, even a first class misdemeanor or whatever. And so they would claim that I wouldn't be allowed to renew my license until I paid that, but I'm not licensed in that state. And so the officer said to me that it's pretty much nothing. <laughs> really? You wouldn't have a court date and then miss the court date and then get a bench warrant? Uh, because I, it's does no show ticket. Like I either pay or it like I think the worst it can do is go to collections. And I mm. believe oh, my okay. former roommate, uh, Chris Cantwell, had mentioned that it might have gone that far already because I got some got mail it. there or something. Okay. So, so, uh, yeah. so, Damo, I mean, one of the things that I've seen that happens in some of your videos is you guys will be on a tour, and it's like the cops know who you are, even though you've never been to the city before. Um, have you encountered some of that where they know you? You know, they kind of knew yeah. that you were coming. Yeah. Yep. That happened in DeKalb. And uh, right, right when we got to the Noblesville Police Station, the cop comes out and goes, "What took you guys so long?" Oh, that was the cop. The cop was like, "Yeah, the cop." He's like, "What took you guys so long?" You know, uh, we were expecting you. We knew you were coming. Welcome to the cop. Uh, <laughs> they never, uh, they never elaborated on what they meant by that. But yeah, I tried like, to ask them exactly what they meant. You know, because I, I, because I've long suspected that they may watch the events or maybe the 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 website itself. And so I was trying to get one of them maybe to give me a little insider info, but he kind of like sidestepped the question uh, and was engaging with another one of our colleagues. So and yeah. later in Cal, uh, the sheriff's department, entirely different, you know, policing force. Uh, we roll up on one of their stops and they just go, "Hey guys, where's the RV?" <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> check it out. Yeah, they've got some. They've got some intel on you guys. Yeah, for sure. Now, the other voice, by the way, is Brian Sumner. Uh, Damo and Brian, thanks for coming on Free Talk Live here, as always tonight. Keep us in the loop, and I know you've just scratched the surface, so our listeners should go to copblock.org/mac-tour. We'll put the link up on our Facebook and Twitter, and check out some of the most recent videos. Great stuff. Thanks, guys. This is Free Talk Live. His hair was falling out in clumps. Our golden retriever, Sundance, he scratched incessantly. Mounds and mounds of fur all over the place. Our hairballs have hairballs. Olive was suffering like a dog. She was itching, she was scratching, she was licking 24 hours a day. Just chewing and chewing and chewing. So. Scratching and, and biting. Buddy, my shih tzu's itching problem, constantly licking his feet. It keeps me up at night. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The shedding slowed down to almost none. The scratching went away after a few days. Tons of energy. No more bad smell. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. Sleep at night. Oh, let me do it again. Sleep at night. Get your dog some Dynavite. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. dot -E com. My name is Bill Bonner. And I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America. From where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Join us here. Toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype on in here at username lrn.fm. If you care about privacy when you're on the Internet, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network. They encrypt your online data before it reaches your Internet service provider. So your ISP can't snoop on you anymore once you start using ProXPN. Uh, you can do it for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, Linux. So whatever your operating system, you're good to go. And you're super good to go when you use our code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live. And 50, as in you get 50% off the monthly price for the lifetime of the account when you buy their annual account with code FTL50. But if you want an even deeper discount, pay with Bitcoin. And you have to enter through this special link, proxpn.com amp. When you pay with Bitcoin through that link, Free Talk Live will get $5 of your purchase to the Free Talk Live AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's a way to help Free Talk Live spread the message of liberty to new radio stations and new listeners. ProXPN is behind us. They came up with this idea, from what I understand. ProXPN.com slash AMP, and you get two years of ProXPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin. It's a huge savings, the biggest we've ever offered, the biggest discount uh, you've ever heard us offer here on Free Talk Live, but it's only available for those of you who can pay with Bitcoin. So proxpn.com slash AMP, like advertise market and promote. And for those of you who don't have Bitcoin or you just want to use your credit card, use code FTL50 at proxpn.com for some great discounts and uh, to keep yourself more private online. So if you want to join us here uh, on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE, again, is our toll-free number. Uh, there's a, a, a just a bizarre story over at Vice about AOL disc collectors. <laughs> now, I thought I'd seen it all, but apparently there are people. Now, I don't know how many of them there are, but there are more than a few people who are actual AOL disc collectors. Now, for the young people in our audience, probably younger than, I don't know, 20 or 15 or something like that, probably 20. Uh, there used to be this thing called AOL. It's, I think, still out there. Uh, it exists as a website. Yeah, I think they, I think they provide an internet service for. I think they. I don't know if they still yeah. do dial up or what, whatever. But people a, have AOL uh, email accounts. Yeah, they do. They do. So AOL still exists. What exactly they they do these days? I I don't really know. But but back in the olden days of the internet, uh, right before actually the internet became a thing, AOL existed, and it was sort of pre-internet, uh, before AOL, there were these bulletin board systems, BBSs, as they were called, that you could dial up 
uh, with your phone, your modem, uh, in your computer, and it would make a real loud crunching noise. And, yeah, it's an awful, awful sound uh, when it would connect, but very unique. So the struggle every, was real. Yeah, uh, and it was slow, super slow. Uh, 300 baud is, I think, the first commercially available modem, and that was before my time. Uh, when I got in, they were up to 2,400, and uh, compared to cable modem connections now, that is like a fraction of a fraction of the speed that, that you get these days. Um, so before AOL, there were these BBSs, and then AOL, and then there were competitors like CompuServe and Prodigy, and I don't know which of those two, if either, are still around today. You never hear about them. They've probably been consumed. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, CompuServe and Prodigy and AOL were kind of like the three biggies. And they offered these services to people where you could call in, again, with your dial-up modem and connect to a large service that could handle hundreds, if not thousands, of connections. Whereas your old school BBSs that were local machines that you could call would usually only have one line. Uh, well, AOL had countless lines. They had connections, uh, local numbers that you could call all around the country and then connect to this big system that allowed you to send email uh, to people within the AOL uh, network. You could transfer files and, you know, kind of chat with those people. So it was a very early form of uh, sort of kind of like an Internet. And then eventually all of those things got connected together with the Internet. And so you could then send things off of AOL to other places in the world. Uh, and that whole time, AOL continued to market itself as the, the way for a new user, basically, someone who's not a power user, to get on the Internet, to to get online. And they would send out disks to everyone. They were available at Walmart. You could just sort of pick them up as you left. Like there was oh, some, yeah. like a, life, I remember like a leaflet, basically. basically. And they would mail them, too. They would just show up in the mail They were constantly. trash. Yeah, they were just trash. Yeah, just, junk mail. Right. I mean, that's and that's why this article at Vice is just such a surprise. It's like, oh, yeah, there are people who collect trash. Because that's what this is. It's trash <laughs> collecting. Uh, somebody who collects all these AOL discs. And, you know, they've got their reasons for it. Like, some of them have some artwork on it or whatever. And we'll go into that here. But it's, it's fascinating. It's uh, Ariel Pardes over at Vice.com reporting uh, the disks came like a swarm of locusts, burrowing into post boxes and sliding through mail slots. They popped out of cereal boxes and appeared on meal trays during airline flights. They fell out of magazines and Happy Meals. They were stocked at the checkout counters of Best Buy, near the popcorn at Blockbuster, on bookshelves at Barnes & Noble. The ubiquity of AOL disks, those free marketing materials sent by America Online in the 90s to entice people to sign up for Internet service, could be likened to world domination. Now, they certainly were prolific in the 90s, but I'm pretty sure they were sending them in the early aughts as well. I wonder when that stopped. When did, it, when did they finally really put a halt on the main outreach of this particular program? Because it was going strong. Because remember, back in the day, Mark, it was the three-and-a-half-inch floppy disks that they would send out, which was actually kind of useful. I don't remember that. All I really? remember are the disks. Okay, you might have been in jail uh, yeah, or prison at the prison, time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so back in the day, they would actually send out a three and a half inch floppy disk. The world was entirely different when you know stepping out in 1989 and stepping in in 1998. Uh, there was right. you know, a lot of things were different. No doubt. Uh, so the floppy disk. You're familiar though with the floppy disk. I sure. I know three and a half, three and a half inch, inch floppy disk. I also know what a five and a quarter inch floppy okay, disk is good. too. Uh, so the three and a half inch disks though were were kind of useful because you could put things on them. So you could t take the AOL disk and just keep it. Right, you, as long as you block off the copy protection thing, you can use those disks, and or you could. They're useful. They're useless now, uh, but you could store things on them, very small things. But it was still at least somewhat useful. I would hold those disks uh, and use them for things. But then they moved to the CDs, which of course CDs are write once and you you can read them a, a billion times, but you can't keep writing to a CD uh, typically. So sure, those it makes were more sense total that they would trash. Do that. Yeah. The CDs were total garbage, and of course CDs are cheaper to manufacture. Uh, than the discs, which has moving parts and, and all of that. So uh, anyway, back to the story here. So, But they were also annoying. If you didn't end up using your 50 hours free, the discs would likely end up in the trash. A, ser a satirical newspaper in California, the, the Larley Beagle, once published a faux report about how there were so many use unused AOL trials in landfills that it was contaminating the nation's drinking water. It bothered Brian Larkin, then a 20-something in Los Angeles, to see his roommates repeatedly throwing the CDs into the garbage. So he started collecting them in a bin to recycle later. Yeah. 
This is what this is. Okay. It's it's hoarding. This is hoarding. Um, basically. But uh, can you s- recycle CDs? I don't know that you can. I don't maybe think he was you can. Saving it for the day that you could. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe you're right about that. I mean, I'm not an expert on recycling. I don't do it. I think it, most of it's a scam. But uh, I but, disagree. But okay, we recycle at my home. There's some things that you can recycle that are actually you know worth something in the market. Certain types of uh, metal, for instance. But a lot of the, a lot of it is kind of a scam. Uh, anyway, the I don't think you can recycle a CD because it's basically plastic with uh, metal inside the plastic. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It's Free Talk Live. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle. Now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one Silver Solution. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Do you know the difference between erudite and pedantic? If you do, you're probably pedantic. But seriously, a surprising number of erudite people mispronounce erudite, which has three syllables, not four. Say erudite, not erudite. Because you are judged by how you speak, you want to avoid common misstatements, especially if you're a job seeker. For instance, do you know the difference between imply and infer? Only a speaker can imply. Only a listener can infer. And when you say you'll be out of pocket, do you mean out of touch? Out of pocket means you're on your own dime, not yet reimbursed. And if anyone ever asks... Why do you always answer a question with a question? You should reply, do I do that? Just kidding. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. How dare you and who do you think you are? I mean, it's my life. It's my business. I should be able to run it how I want to, and my customers should be able to make the choice for themselves as to whether or not they want to do business with me. And they should be able to make that choice based on uh, the quality of my product or my reputation or the fact that I've got third-party certification or whatever factors they deem important. If I'm doing business and you don't trust me or you think I'm shady, then you don't have to do business with me. In fact, you can tell other people what you think about my business and my practices and Maybe they also will join you in not doing business with me. There's no need for government regulations out there. The marketplace can handle third-party certification of various different products and services to where people who are concerned about whether or not the business they're dealing with is trustworthy can check with a verifiable resource that, indeed, this is a trustworthy individual or a trustworthy company that you're doing business with. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's 
It's Free Talk Live. You're invited here to join us on the radio waves. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we've got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. And with you here tonight, you've got Ian. And Mark. Let's continue here. We'll go to your calls and thoughts. Also, uh, Mark, tell me about a, a new graphic novel that is available. Yeah, it's called James versus the New World Order dot com, and I, we've been talking about it here for a couple of weeks on Free Talk Live. It's about a uh, what, what happens when a bizarre cult army calling itself the Trust invades a sleepy little mountain hometown of a man named James Contrell, who's a big-hearted country boy who's got a crappy job and he's learned to live without dreams, and sometimes, well, in life. You need a guy who's learned to live without dreams. He might be the best suited to handle a nightmare. You can read the action comedy graphic novel, um, James vs. the New World Order, by Brandon Bitros and illustrated by J. Matthew Root, the first in what's estimated to be a five-volume, 24-issue uh, series. Now, they've got today only, they're doing a special on the Kickstarter. If with your $10 pre-order, you get the whole series. So the whole series... For your ten dollar pre order today only cool. at James V S the New World Order dot com. It's a big deal and I'm excited by the offer. James V S the New World Order dot com. That's as in James versus the New World Order dot com. All right, so our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. More about AOL disc collectors. Apparently, that's a thing. Uh first, we got Jay Noon on the line, uh on the amp lines. Uh, hey Jay Noon. Hey, um, I just want to let you let you guys know. Do I sound okay? Yes, sir. All right, I hear a little echo. So, Adam, I, I'm, you know, in the metro Denver area, north of Denver, and at the Denver Bitcoin Center tonight, uh, Adam Cash will be showing up about 9.30 tonight to do a speech. Uh, he was there at 6.30, Uh-oh. but uh, TSA held him up. He missed his, one, missed his fl- first flight or something. So you said Adam Kokesh, who's a a great liberty activist, has uh, has gone to to jail for civil disobedience, and obviously he's a, a Bitcoin supporter. Mark, when you and I were in New York City, they had a Bitcoin center in Manhattan as oh, well. Oh yeah, it's awesome. We went to check that out. So uh, have you actually been to the Bitcoin center yet down there? Oh, I've been there several times. Uh, owned by Mike Dupree. I don't know if you guys know him. I've heard the name. I don't. So what do they do? Is it just sort of like an outreach location? Do they have speeches there? What's kind of the gig? Uh, they do anything they can to promote Bitcoin. They got um, some space leased out to some guys at a very discount price. like, um, And they do uh, lectures and seminars on how miners work, how Bitcoin works, cool. uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, they got a guy there who's got a few 3D printers, another guy is fixing computers. And it's a, it's a nice mix of like libertarian, anarchist, and geeks, essentially, is what, what I've you know, experience. Yeah, I, that was kind of our brief experience when we went and checked it out in uh, in Manhattan. I, I wonder how many cities have these things. Uh, I didn't know there you know there were more than one, so that's cool because you know it's not a cheap thing to rent. No, just space. to rent space, especially in a big city, and then yeah. if it's not and there's no revenue, a, you know, not you're particularly not, a profit center. Right. You, you want people to come in to see the speeches, so you can't charge people to come in and see the speeches. You want people to find out about Bitcoin, so you can't charge them. You know, there's no reason to anyone would pay to come to this place unless they were just giving a donation and i highly doubt there i mean maybe there are maybe there are enough donations coming in to cover the cost but it seems like it's unlikely it seems like it's just a labor of love for the people who do it so you know god has blessed them for for doing that i think that's uh, that's absolutely wonderful and and when we did go there it definitely seemed like kind of a, a young hip uh, happening spot. They were having a party. We'd actually just missed it that night that we showed Story up. Story of my life. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, so Jay, uh, thank you for sharing that tonight. And uh, what else? Anything else that you wanted to get out there? Go ahead. Yeah, one more thing I should say. It is actually who was hosting Adams uh, as part of his Freedom Book Tour is um, We Are Change Colorado dot org, and uh, because we're expecting more people than their normal meeting place can hold. Um, I was able to arrange it last night to have it at the Denver Bitcoin Center. And I've been going down there quite a bit. I, I went to a um, 9-11 Truth thing to go, you know, socialize and try to meet some new activists and talk about Free State Project. And I've gotten a, I've gotten a Free State Project, a tremendous amount of interest. Um, people are 
always asking me about it, and uh, I'm always talking about it. And uh, there's actually a – I'm pretty impressed with the activist scene uh, down in Denver. Um, you know, out here in the country where I am, there's nothing but, you know, cows and wheat, so there isn't much activism going on. But in Denver, there's a, there's a lot of guys that are uh, participating and doing what they what they can. It's, it's pretty good. Awesome. Jay, thanks for the uh, the report tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number, by the way, DenverBitcoinCenter.com is their site. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, what is Bitcoin? I realize we didn't mention that for... We probably should have. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Bitcoin is what it is. is It's a peer-to-peer open source currency as opposed it's a a computer program but this computer program it's a currency for the new millennium um you know money's been changing throughout human history Uh, there's all kinds of changes that have occurred but these legacy currency systems are set up for the past i mean you can think about it how many problems there are regarding credit card hacks and these sorts of things credit cards aren't made for the internet they Mm -hmm. were never made for the internet well Bitcoin is a currency that's made for the internet. So as long as the internet's here, Bitcoin is likely to be around. I consider it to be, um, it, as a matter of fact, many banking systems are looking at using the blockchain technology, how they can integrate it and make their, their uh, systems more secure. It's exciting stuff. Bitcoin's amazing. And, you know, there's, there's always something new that's being developed with Bitcoin, whereas government money you know, what do they change over the years? They put a little strip in it once. Now they, the pictures of the presidents are bigger. Yeah, they made the pictures different. I hear they're going to switch out uh, off of uh, the $10 <laughs> bill. They're going to take Hamilton off and put some woman on. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the government that's gets a, to... That's a big change. The government gets to print out as many of their dollars as they want to. The Bitcoin, however, is restricted in its inflation. There, there will be more Bitcoins mined for probably the next 100 years but once 21 million bitcoins are reached, that's it. The faucet shuts off, and uh, and so there's nobody, you know, there's no president who gets to come in and just sort of manipulate the situation or Federal Reserve no chairman manipulating or, it now or whoever. Exactly. Uh, and Bitcoin is actually run by sort of a democratic process. Uh, ultimately, there's uh, it's the people, the miners, if you will, the people who are mm-hmm. are really putting the effort into Bitcoin to making Bitcoin. The, you know, essentially to keep it running that's what the miners kind of do mm-hmm. uh the the mine you know without getting into technical details the bitcoin miners not not unlike gold miners put effort into They're the uh, transaction processors yeah and ultimately the they effort. use their independent machinery their independent um you know computers to tran to to process transactions that uh, we do every day Yep. So uh, check it out. Learn more about Bitcoin over at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Great place to get started and learn more. And, and it's really, you know, it's not hard to, to, I don't think, to get the basics on Bitcoin. Um, there's some nice, easy to watch short videos that'll help you with that. Bitcoin.com. All right, so we were discussing the AOL disc collectors. This is apparently a thing. Uh, I can't help but chuckle every time I hear it. It is funny. Michael Dean sent me a link to people who've actually listed AOL discs on eBay, but I can't find any that have any bids. You go to the uh, you know the completed listings. Yeah. Nobody bids on these things. So why anyone's bothering to list them? I'm not really sure. They have value for them. Oh, not if no one bids on them. I don't know. What that's to say. an indicator that not many people value them if no one's bidding. The people right? putting them up value them. That's true. Uh, but we'll continue on that. Doug first is in Illinois, listening via TuneIn. Hello, Doug. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hello. Um, yeah, I actually want to bring up uh, an issue. Um, a guy called in from Nevada. I believe either by the name of Jay or Dave. A week ago, he talked to Mark. Um, you weren't on the air, Ian, and uh, he pretty much claimed that Mark had been anti-cop and that Mark could not be objective to the fact that Mark never rode with the cop and Mark did jail time. Well, you know what? That's pretty accurate. You know what? Yeah, you know what? I've never done jail time. I've never had a ticket in my life and I can be pretty objective. I mean, to, to, to find out that clearly we have an issue where we have people that are getting shot. They're raiding the wrong home. They're killing the, the, the property owner. They're killing the dog. Doug, hold that thought. I'll let you continue here. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control. 
The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair, a thinking person's historical fantasy novel. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com. PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here. Our toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. And we've uh, that's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. And uh, a lot of people are frustrated about the police. It sounds like Doug on uh, the line here in Illinois is as well. Uh, Doug, you were calling in reference to a discussion that went on previously where somebody was blowing off Mark's opinion about the police because he'd been to prison. And so therefore he was jaded. Is that right? Yeah, 
yeah, according to the caller, if you've never driven with a cop and if you have done jail time, you cannot be non-objective. You, you clearly have our anti-cop, and I've never done jail time. I've never had a ticket in my life. I show my family what we have going on every week, you know, where, where it will be a Utah cop going into a backyard looking for a child that ran away, and he will shoot the dog. Oh, I you know, saw that one. Property owner. Yeah. I mean, you, you, here, here can be a recommendation for your show. Do one every day. You could cover a bad cop every day for 2015 alone and not cover all of them that happened in 2015. No, I believe that. that. Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't I, uh, absolutely wouldn't be able to cover them all. Right, and the idea that, okay, well, if I'm a cop and you don't like the job that I'm doing, therefore don't call me for, that can be another thing that they pull that I really hate. You know, they'll tell people, <laughs> if you don't like the job that we're doing, don't ever call for help. Okay, fine, yeah. I won't. Then go on ahead and give me a refund, refund or a rebate for my property bill that had been to pay your paycheck. And yeah. by the way, turn in your badge and your gun and find another uh, another job. They'll laugh right. in your face. Right, people. it's ridiculous. They, right. they can laugh in your face yeah. because they're going to get their money. That's like the plumber saying, hey, you don't like the job I do? Well, pay me. You go ahead and you pay me like you normally do because you got to pay me because I'll kick you out of your freaking house and I'll take <laughs> everything you own and your kids will be sleeping in a box on the street, but you don't call me when you got a problem with your pooper, okay? That's, that's how it goes here. You pay me because you got to pay me because I'm the plumber and... Then you don't call me because I provide the best service in the world. And you don't like but, it. Shut up. But anybody but, would but, see but, that but as wrong, be, right? It can, but it can be different with the plumber. The fact that if I don't like the job you did being a plumber, I can go on. I can get another plumber. I can review the, review you. I can go on ahead and I can get a different plumber. I think a lot of it can come down to the fact that they feel that they're entitled to the job. They are. Because they do. I, 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 I firmly believe that every public union should be abolished. They should be completely gone. So did Franklin Delano problem. Roosevelt. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't have a problem with a union in a private company. Like we have a grocer here named Jewel, and then we have another grocer here named Meyer, and I think that their union, and we have a bunch of them. Okay, you have one union competing with another union, but here in the in in the public in a public entity like uh, like uh, like a department, a fire department or whatnot, where you have no competition, there should be no union. Period. That you know, I mean. Either that or you sound like the kind of guy who ought to get out of Illinois. <laughs> oh, no, I am. I'm getting out of Illinois. I'm out of here, along with a lot of other people. Illinois, they're the only one in the union to have a, pro a population drop for the year. They've had more people wow. moving out that of Illinois. That can't be true. There, there, are, there are other states that are losing people, too. I mean, it can't just be Illinois. No, no, no. When you Even Michigan, when you count in for the people that are born and the people that are fleeing, even Michigan had, a, had, a, had the population go up. Huh, I'll take Illinois, a look. Illinois, we're the only one. Wow. Yeah, Illinois, we're the only one with the population going down. <laughs> and, of course, their response to that is going to be to raise the income tax again, like they already did, what, 66% in just a few years ago, uh, because, you know, they don't have as many people there, so got to raise taxes. not like they can cut spending or make the government right. smaller. And, and, then, and then what you do with that can be that when you do that, you have more people get fed up, more people leave, and then you have the burden fall upon more people. They get fed up, and then you have more people leave. I mean, you had it happen in Detroit, you know. But I, I find it ironic that that caller called up like that, and he really laid into you. And I thought that Mark, you, and the other guy were really going to lay into him. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, I'm like, I'm waiting here any minute, you know. Well, it's Paul, also, yeah. it's also, look, I don't know, I don't know how Rich would describe himself or Mark would describe himself, but I'm not anti-cop. I, uh, I'm a critic. I'm critical of the police. I, I will speak out when they do things that I don't think that they should be doing. That's... I would describe myself on the show as the most reasonable, the most pro-cop person on the show. I started out as the guy that was constantly defending them. The thing that for me really changed things is, is when you see these unacceptable beatings that cops are delivering to people, you don't see them. It's not usually not just one cop. It's several of them hanging around doing yeah. their thing, and the other cops aren't stopping him. They're not arresting him. If they're doing anything, they're jumping in and kicking somebody in the head because he did. And that is what, what? Uh, you know, I, I, it's not one bad apple. That from what I can tell, I just don't see the one bad apple. When you equate that type of authority with no accountability, you're going to get that. I mean, that can be the whole problem. We have accountability. You know, if we if we get into our car and we begin getting on the phone and we rear end the guy and we kill the guy in the car, we're going to end up going to jail. Mm -hmm. A cop, however, they get you know like I brought up what happened in Wheeling, Illinois, a while ago. You know, going going after a guy doing ten over the limit, uh, 
that went up to 100, the cop guys that went up to 100, did not have the light bar on the, on the, on the cop car active, uh, plowed into a guy in the road and killed him. No accountability. Not charged by Lake County, not charged uh, by anybody, and continued to be employed by and the was, Wheeling PD. There was another instance where they killed a kid on a bike, um, where a cop killed a kid on a bike because he was using the uh, the laptop in the uh, the seat next to him. Now, they've got to have these devices to do their job, there's no doubt about it, but they, just like anybody, when using an electronic device, are going to be distracted, and the ending of a life of a child, um, they're not, basically not held responsible in the same way as you and I would be. Doug, thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight. I hope you're considering a move to New Hampshire if you love liberty because this is a great place uh-huh. to be. You know, too, much, too much cold weather. Too much yeah. cold weather. I, it I can't be any different than I mean, Illinois. If you could be My more wife's f- from Chicago. It's no different. Right. The question is, if you can be more free, is being a little cold actually worth it? I say yes. I will definitely think about it. Thanks. I'll, Check I'll out freestateproject.org because I'm from Florida, and you know I get cold if it's like below 70 degrees. <laughs> then I get uncomfortable, and it gets below 70 degrees quite a bit up here. But I love being around people who actually care about freedom, not just the free staters, but the natives. A lot of natives up here are big freedom lovers in a big way, and there's a reason why it's called the Live Free or Die State. Now, it is just a slogan, and there are plenty of ways that you know it's unfree in New Hampshire. It is not a truly free place, but it is arguably the the freest of places, and we've got thousands of libertarians and voluntarists who are going to be moving in here as part of the Free State Project. Over 1,500 of them are already here, and we've got thousands more. Over 17,000 are pledged to make the move, uh, and that move will be triggered once we hit 20,000. So the more people we can get to sign up over at freestateproject.org, the sooner that move will be triggered, the sooner thousands more libertarians will move to New Hampshire, and the sooner we'll have even more victories than uh, than we've already had. It's really happening here, and thank you, Doug, for your call tonight. And plus, the cop here, uh, at least in our area of New Hampshire, they don't beat the living daylights out of people on even an irregular basis here, or we'd hear about it, I would think. You know, people would come to us if that were happening on a regular basis. We've got Keen Cop Block in the area here. Cop Block was actually the founders of Cop Block. We heard a, a Damo Freeman on the line earlier tonight. He and Pete Ayer, the two founders, have lived in Keene. Uh, they're sort of mobile guys, so they move around, but they have, uh, they've had a home base here in Keene uh, previously. And this is a great place to be for for police accountability, but also it's nice because the cops here are just generally more under control than in a lot of places. I'd say they're a cut above, yeah. and I'd say that they've got a, they've had a large amount amount of count, accountability for a long time. Yep, that's true. Uh, so you can go to freestateproject.org, learn more about what's happening here. That's just, you know, we, we only scratched the surface on this show with what is going on. In fact, I've got a news update about the illegal Uber driver. I definitely want to get to that story here tonight because that is, in my opinion, that's an international story uh, that is happening right now in New Hampshire on the seacoast where there's an Uber driver, actually more than one now, uh, multiple Uber drivers who are violating openly flou- uh, flouting the law by continuing to pick up passengers and take them places in the city of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where it has essentially been outlawed them doing that. He recently got in uh, into an interaction with a Portsmouth cop, and there's audio of it. So we'll share that with you here in a few moments. You can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. These taxi companies with their medallions, um, they basically price out the um, the competition. And this is, it's essentially another union. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a union that says that you can't compete. Only the people that have the licenses and have jumped through the hoops mm-hmm. and do those sorts of things can compete. You can't give somebody a ride someplace for money. This is something we all do every day. We earn money, we drive cars. No, no, you can't earn money by driving a car. <laughs> you need a special license for that. That's what the state right. does. You the can state, take someone for free. That's fine. Yeah, the state takes away your right and then sells it back to you. That's how they make money. They're just hoods. It's true. Thugs. Gangsters. That's all they are. I wish they weren't, because a lot of them are likable people. Sure. I mean, the, you know, well, the, they don't understand what that's what they're doing. They've right. grown up in the paradigm in this paradigm, but this paradigm's been around as right. long as, um, you know, it, it's been around as long as there's been humans. It's the master-slave paradigm. Who are the people in the government to tell you that you can't drive somebody around for money? They are simply usurpers claiming to own your ability to uh, profit. That's all they are. They're hey. just. Would be masters. 855 450 free. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. It's 855 450 3733. 
If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of .211 Bitcoin or more. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.99 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,166 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $248. Antiwar.com reports, as with most high-profile militant leaders, Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State has had his share of claimed deaths and claimed mortal woundings at the hand of various forces he is at war with. His fate is once again uncertain as the Iraqi military claims it hit a the Islamic State convoy in which he was traveling. According to a statement from the Iraqi military, forces struck the convoy in the far west of the Anbar province and that Baghdadi was heading to a meeting in Karbala. They claim the meeting itself was also attacked, killing several unnamed the Islamic State officials. Iraqi officials say they are uncertain of Baghdadi's condition and that he was carried away from the site of the strike in a vehicle. The Pentagon also issued a statement saying they can't confirm any reports of Baghdadi being killed or even wounded in the attack. The oft-reported demise of Baghdadi has raised a lot of questions about how much his death or incapacitation would really matter to the Islamic State. Analysts have suggested the Islamic State has a very deep bench of potential leaders, which explains why a large number of slain the Islamic State leaders have not amounted to much. For over 35 years, Robertson Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Robertson Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a retired FBI agent and a prosecutor released independent reports ruling the shooting death of 12-year-old Tamir Rice by Cleveland police as justified ahead of a grand jury decision. The reports were prepared for Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Timothy J. McGinty. A grand jury will decide if a police officer and his partner will face criminal charges over the death of Tamir Rice. Tamir was shot to death while playing with a pellet gun in a Cleveland park last November. Responding to a 911 call about a guy with a pistol 
that was probably fake. Police officer Timothy Lohman fired several shots at Rice two seconds after arriving on the scene. In June, a Cleveland judge found probable cause for murder charges, involuntary manslaughter, reckless homicide, negligent homicide, and dereliction of duty after conducting a non-binding legal review of the case against Lohman and his partner Frank Garmbach. Colorado prosecutor Lamar Sims, senior chief deputy district attorney in Denver, said that Lohman's decision was objectively reasonable. Sims wrote in his report, there can be no doubt that Rice's death was tragic and indeed, when one considers his age, heartbreaking. However, I conclude that Officer Lohman's belief that Rice posed a threat of serious physical harm or death was objectively reasonable, as was his response to that perceived threat. An attorney for Tamir Rice's family accused the experts of being pro-police and attempting to whitewash Tamir's death. The Rice family has continuously said police acted too quickly without properly assessing the situation after arriving on scene. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal. The search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co. Reuters reports California will ban public schools from naming their sports teams Redskins, a name seen as a slur against Native Americans. However, the state will not stop municipalities from naming parks and buildings after Confederate heroes. Advocates for Native Americans welcomed the decision to ban the term Redskins. California is the first state in the nation to enact a statewide ban on the term, although individual school districts in Houston, Texas and Madison, Wisconsin have already done so. In another racially sensitive area. However, California Governor Jerry Brown vetoed a bill to ban naming public property after Confederate heroes. Brown, who last year signed a bill outlawing the sale of faux Confederate currency at the state capital gift shop, said local decision makers should choose names for schools and parks. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. NASA's recent discovery of water on Mercury has led to speculation among scientists that the planet could potentially sustain an intergalactic space prison housing the universe's worst criminals. Scientists believe that organic compounds found on the planet's surface could be useful for creating an off-world space Australia, where strength is the only law. However, they caution it is too early to say whether or not fights among the space jail's prisoners would be broadcast here on Earth for the entertainment of wealthy gamblers. But NASA's lead researchers do say that Mercury's ability to support human life raises important questions about who the prison guards would be. Perhaps the guards themselves would be space mercenaries, or maybe we'd just use robots. The robots would have guns for hands. Well, obviously. Critics inside NASA caution against funneling too many resources into the Mercury project when it would be so much cooler to build a prison on the moon ruled by clones of the prisoners themselves. Researchers encourage the public to read their findings, which have been released in the form of a graphic novel titled The Mercury Cipher. This is the Onion News Network. It is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Coming up tonight, the latest from the illegal Uber driver. There is uh, one man here in New Hampshire uh, that has pledged to continue picking up passengers illegally in the city of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, where Uber has basically been banned. And there's not a law that actually explicitly bans Uber in Portsmouth, but ultimately if the Uber company doesn't jump through the hoops the government demands they jump through, then their operating in the city is considered illegal. And so one of their drivers is flouting, uh, flouting that law and has now had his first interaction with police. We'll share some of that with you here. And, of course, you can bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Last hour, we just got started on a piece from Vice Magazine, vice.com, about people who collect AOL discs. <laughs> there, Every time you say it, it's I so just funny. chuckle. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know we're, we're talking about hoarders here. Basically, it is definitely a hoarding thing because you, you were, this is trash uh, for most people. It was at one point, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, there are enough collectors out there to where this could be worth something. 
Well, let's look. Let's take a look. Okay, so when you, um, like for instance, we're from Florida, and um, I know that many of the excavations, the archaeological ex- excavations that went on in Florida, were of midden piles. These were the things that uh, Native Americans, uh, basically, they're trash piles. Oh yeah. Okay. And there is a time in the course of human events when your trash becomes valuable. Now. Is it so for AOL uh, discs? I don't. I don't feel like we've gotten to that point. No, the in the evidence history. is against it. If you look that look at them on eBay, no one bids on them. They're putting them up there, but no one's bidding. So that to me is evidence these things aren't worth anything to people. There are some people to whom they might be worth something, but maybe the, maybe the most rare discs don't make it on eBay, and the, it's the rare ones that fetch it. <laughs> no, don't, you laugh, you laugh. But in this story, they talk that they talk about how there are some rare. AOL discs that are apparently prized possessions, at least among the very small group of people that uh, that collects these things. So the story again from Vice.com. Uh, it, it bothered Brian Larkin, a then 20-something in Los Angeles, to see his roommates repeatedly throwing the CDs into the garbage. So he started collecting them in a bin to recycle later, which I question whether you can recycle CDs given that they are actually mixed product. It's not just plastic. There's a, a there's like a layer of aluminum inside that plastic. And I don't know, can you just crush all that up and recycle it? I doubt it. Uh, Maybe in a special CD recycler. Uh, then he, anyway, he started collecting them, and he never got around to recycling them. When he moved, he found the bin, now piled high with the shiny discs, and had a revelation. They were beautiful. Mm. Larkin, who now has well over 2,000 AOL discs in his possession, thought he was the only one collecting these things. Soon, he realized there was a small but tenacious community of AOL disc collectors. <laughs> very there's, small, very tenacious. There's Lydia Sloan Klein, who Larkin found through her now defunct GeoCities site called Lydia's AOL Disc Collection. Then there was Sparky Huffle, who ran an Angel Fire website and wrote the complete collector's guide, AOL CD Collecting. <laughs> the new high-tech version of baseball Look, card collecting, he said. It's Well, I mean, I don't know about baseball cards. When I collected baseball cards, I went to the store, I paid money uh, for yeah. baseball cards, and I got baseball cards and some gum, right? Um Crappy gum. I, what's that? Crappy. Gum. It was crappy gum. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. But it, you know, it's, it's fun as a kid. Though, incentivized yeah. the baseball cards, and it was right. something else. It's something to chew on while you look at your baseball. Yeah, cards. sure. And uh, whereas these, I mean, to me, if you're going to collect something, you might as well collect something that's free. That's the rationale, actually, from some of these people, Mark. If you're going to collect something, yeah. <laughs> now you don't understand collecting at all. Sure, I do. What What do you collect? Um, and I used to have uh, some collection. I had a laser disc. I had some laser discs in mm-hmm. one time. Did you try to get each of them in a series or anything? You couldn't. I mean, that would be beyond. Yeah. Uh, so that's not really. Reach. It's not really collecting. Now your transformers. You had those at one point. I had a, a fair amount of. Did those. you get all the first generation transformers? Did you? I wasn't. I didn't have that goal. Ner- yeah, you didn't have that as a goal. I. See, this is that's kind of how a collector works. I see what you're saying. Um, They're and, trying to achieve some sort of completeness. Yeah, the, the there's idea. something like that going. I, at one point, had every Avengers comic that had been uh, produced. But but even if you don't have every one of them, it's still called a collection. You have collected yeah. things. Yeah, I'm not trying to... I'm just saying that, to me, just this because is what collection means. I, I get what you're saying. But, you know, if there's a 1,000 Avengers comics and you have 900 of them, that's still a pretty good collection, That's right? your collection yeah. of them, And yes. it's still a bunch of junk. Yeah, basically but, well, just I mean, taking up space. It it depends on well, if somebody will pay for it. Yeah. It's uh, at that point it is it it's an antique or whatever a collectible. Um, but I mean you know if you're going, I say if you're going to collect something, then you might as well collect free things um, as long as there's not too many of them, <laughs> and uh, they don't uh, rule your life in any way. But as you know, That's going the problem out with collections and paying is they for do them, rule they your do. life. But I will make the argument: the collectors collect. And I had to kind of rid myself of that attitude. Oh, it's terrible. But it collectors just, just collect. Right. And that's something that, uh, you know, it's it, ew, I don't, It's just stuck in their personality. It, it is, uh, you know, it, it's a fine line between collecting and hoarding. You know, I mean, the hoarder is collecting things, too. The hoarder is collecting old newspapers and dirty boxes and you know whatever it is that comes across their purview junk mail uh so the hoarders collect things and they tend to collect free things which means they have more of a junky collection than the standard collector many collectors have pride in their collections and they you know dust them and keep them clean the hoarder doesn't really care so much about dusting they've just got them they've just got things and they pile them and they don't really have them in any meaningful order so newspapers would seem like they're that way to me however 
I have junkie. S- you mean? Yeah, they're just one of these junky things to collect. Yeah. But I like I go see a friend once a week at the old folks' home, mm-hmm. and they have the newspaper from the day they opened in a display case, and it's World War II. It's like huh. 1944 or something like that. But just one. They have one newspaper sitting out there from the day they opened. Now, that's a nice thing. That's not a collection. That's just a, a memento or yeah, something like uh, that. it's memorabilia. But it it's neat to see this thing. And it's, and it's sure. in the middle of World War II But also. you can see it there when it's put in this you know glass case and it's yeah. framed and it's meant to be seen. Not when it's at the bottom of a stack in a room full of stacks Moldering of, of <laughs> newspaper. Cat urine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, you got to, I think, hoarder's the worst of this problem collectors aren't as bad because at least they try to organize and have some sort of a system to the madness, if you will. And indeed, there's a photo here in the story of someone's AOL collection, AOL disc collection, and it occupies, you know, there. so you've got those metal shelving units that you can get at like uh, Home Depot or whatever. They're maybe three to five shelves tall, one of those kind of shelving units where you store stuff sure. on. Uh, so these are more like sort of like that but they're uh they're deep so you can store things in the metal shelf like they're deep enough to hold cds they're kind of like specialized cd holding metal shelves he's got what appears to be you can see in the photo four of these metal shelves and it takes up the entire photo so there may be more of them uh three shelf units high just full of discs just full of them and then he's got just totes full of discs that haven't been organized they're just totes full of discs uh sitting there and so well, they're pretty well or I mean when I'm looking here I'm looking at a reasonably well ordered collection sure. it seems like it takes up a lot of space and it does. you know I don't hold value for this particular thing to me this enters into the area of trash I did my very best to get rid of these things when I was uh younger than I am today but these I mean you know if he holds value for these AOL things he's at least taking reasonably good care of them these AOL discs what are they that's called that's what I was saying the, the boot coll- up discs the collector there's the AOL CDs AOL uh, CDs the uh, that's what I was saying Mark though the collector puts some time in they're trying yeah. to organize they're trying to present and you know I'll give him credit for that uh, so some of these collectors, there's the guy that wrote the book, apparently, The Collector's Guide, AOL CD Collecting, the new high-tech version of baseball card collecting, without any of the value. Uh, there was Jim McKenna and John Lieberman. Now, this is original. They collected their discs for the express purpose of dumping them back at AOL's headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun to show up with a dump truck full of these things. It had to have been done before. Uh, and there was, a bus- there was Bustam Halim, who, according to Wired, is nicknamed The Leader. Of the bunch, Sloane Klein is arguably the most prolific collector. By her estimate, she has over 4,000 AOL discs stored in the basement of her home in Kansas. Every CD in her collection is different. There are discs wow. in every color. Ones in plastic cases or shrink wrap packaging. Ones promising various hours on the free trial. Versions, uh, versions one came through the... Excuse me, versions one through three came on floppy disk, and some of the early ones came in metal tins. Sloan Klein has those. those kinds too. 855 450 free. More on AOL disc collecting. What's your collection? Are you obsessed with something? It's Free Talk Live. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. Blake Dev- Development.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America. From where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. 
Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. What's your collection? Or should I say obsession? Because some people, you know, they just go and go and go. 4,000 AOL CDs is what one of these collectors has. Another guy has 2,000 of them. We're talking about AOL CD collectors. But maybe you've got an interesting, uh, you know, collection, or at least you think it's interesting. <laughs> you want to tell us how far you've gone? And can you admit that you've gone overboard and have gone too far? Is it taking up two rooms of your house or your entire basement or something like that? I mean, if that's what your thing is, don't get me wrong, you should do it. But it's interesting, you know, people's collections, I think it's kind of a sign of how truly wealthy uh, that we are in this society, is that you have so much free time and expendable income that you can collect these things that otherwise, you know, you'd want to... store wanna, them. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> you'd want to collect and store food, right? Like a squirrel collects uh, nuts <laughs> for the winter time. There are some things that it makes sense to collect from a extending your life kind of aspect uh, but, you know, since we've got the whole eating thing down, we've got plenty of food and the marketplace provides those things. We've got all this leisure time on our hands. I know it's still a lot of people have to work 40 hours a week, but that still leaves you with quite a few hours later on that you can spend uh, collecting or doing whatever it is that, uh, that you want to do. But have you ever had a collection that you realized it, it's gone too far? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or... You can call and tell us about other people's collections uh, that you have encountered that have just seemed like obsession. And, and at what point does it cross into the hoarder boundaries as well? Because that line can get a little blurry uh, at some points. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, whether you're a business card collector or not, you probably want to get your own business cards so you can hand them out to people, not hoard them. 
Uh, you can do that through Vistaprint.com. And with our discount code, FTL, like Free Talk Live, code FTL, you'll get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. This is great for small business owners. Uh, and it, they can also do other businessy sort of things. So, you know, postcards, flyers, banners, apparel. They can put your logo and graphics on a lot of stuff. So go check out Vistaprint for that. And when you're designing your card, it's super easy. You can customize the text, colors, the back sides, and more. You can even upload your logo to one of their existing designs. Or if you've got your own design pre-done, just upload the entire graphic like I did and uh, and print it out. I made some Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree promo cards with Vistaprint, and their online tool is super easy to use. With our discount code, it's up to a 50% savings over regular site pricing. It's a fantastic deal. And, of course, there are tons of layouts and design options, so your card can really reflect you. Go to Vistaprint.com. Get 500 custom business cards for just $9.99, and you can create and design it right there. Vistaprint.com with code FTL, like Free Talk Live. We're talking about the AOL disc collectors. These people are real. Yeah, you asked about uh, things that we collected, and I have a couple of things that I can talk about. So I currently collect radio station bumper stickers. You still do? Yeah, I do. I mean, I just, you know, when when I can get one, I get them. I never knew it was a collection for you. I mean, I... Whenever I'd visit your your house, I'd see some of them on like your filing cabinet. Yeah, I have but... a filing cabinet that I'm covering in them over okay. time. And you know, I mean, when I happen to be at a radio station, I get their bumper sticker as mm-hmm. best I can. And and for me, it's just a you know, it's, it's just something to do. So you only collect them in real life. You won't like try to buy them online no. or whatever. I, I I I have never even sent away for one. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess in a couple of instances, radio stations have sent them to me. But usually, I talk to them out on the phone, and then for whatever reason, they sent them. When's the last time you acquired one of these things? Uh, I guess uh, last summer was okay. the last time recently. I mean, I'm not eaten up with this collection. Yeah. Um, it's a This is a collection I can handle. It sounds like it. And it doesn't take up space either if it's just attaching to a file cabinet. It's right. Not like and it doesn't cost bulky. anything because they usually give them to you. So whereas in the past I had a collection, I had this thing about collecting comic books, and then before that I collected Star Wars figures. I had every Star Wars figure from the first generation and then from Empire Strikes Back. And I now had, this was when you were a kid, right? This is when I was a and kid. And your mom threw them out. My mom, um, you know, there was, yeah, there's uh, my, actually a friend uh, bought them at a highly discounted price. Oof. Yeah. And I don't think he paid either. Uh, um, yeah. Whatever. You know, I mean, these things happen. Where is he now? I don't know. I I suppose I could look for him. What what do you want me to do once I find him? Get your cut. Yeah, whatever. Um, Because if he sold them, he's banking, right? The Star Wars figures? Yeah, but they weren't in the case. You know, these were were played with. Okay, I got you. Still, though, stuff like that that's really old and, and yeah, generally Ian, valuable. You have, do not, no, no, don't, don't get the uh, a, a confused idea of collectibles. When if you go and look at Overstreet's comic guide and you look at yeah. pricing, you will find that, uh, for instance, I had uh, Avengers number four, the first appearance of Captain America. Now, in a readable copy, say what they call fair condition or very fair condition, slightly yeah. above fair, you can get this thing for like I don't know. I shouldn't be just giving numbers, uh, but you know, call it. Uh, some reasonable price, like 100 bucks or something. You can okay. get this very old comic from the very early 60s for, you know, in a readable condition. Yeah. This old, and it's fine. It's expensive. Eh, well, no. You can get it for thousands, maybe tens of in thousands of dollars. In mint condition. Yeah. or near mint. Near mint's the only thing that's going to come in. But there's a big difference between sort of a functional one and I got gotcha, you, but off still, the there's one. also, you got to factor in scarcity. I mean, if, if something there's is no so- There's no scarcity sc- to the Star Wars stuff. Really? Not the, no, I mean they made to, they made a lot of toys. They hung them in the steer, in the Sears Robux. They were all huh. over the place. Okay, I've always heard they're fairly rare. If they were rare. in the case, if you yeah. had them in the packaging, right. which of course is no no kids going to do. Uh, I'm just not that worried about. Yeah. it. I'm not going to think. No, you know what I'm going to do, Ian? Screw you! I'm never thinking about Star Wars figures again because they took up too much of my life. I at wasn't one suggesting point. you start. Collecting yes, you did. Them, you Mark. wanted me to find my friends so, so that you I could, could cash in. Yeah, no, I'm hey, not going to think about. He didn't pay it. you. <laughs> he owes you some money, especially if he sold those things and cashed in big time. That's yeah. what I was saying, Mark. I wasn't saying you needed ago. to get your collection back. No, what I'm saying, what what I'm, I just don't want my mind occupied with this stuff. Yeah. The, the, this is the problem with collections. It's not that you. 
have the space taken up of your home. It's not oh, that the that money you spend me. on it. You're going to spend money on something. It's the mind suck. Mm. It's the the real estate in your brain that these things take up. And that's what I have a problem with collecting about. Hmm. Because after the Star Wars figures, then I just moved on to Avengers comic books. Yeah. And I had all of those. I remember got my first one was 236. I began wow. to collect backwards from 236. And you got them all. Huh? And then all of them up to like 250 or something. And then I you know, essentially hit uh, adulthood and wasn't interested anymore and mm-hmm. couldn't, uh, I didn't care as much. And then prison comes along and I certainly didn't have the option to co- collect uh, comic books in prison. So yeah. um, after after I had that little hiatus, I learned that if you can't put it in a footlocker, you don't need it. Yeah, that's true. So I was able to so part was with this pr- mentality. So prison helped you with that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I want to thank everybody from prison for helping me with that. Uh, all right. So more about some of these AOL discs. Uh, the lady Sloan, or whoever this is, yes, yeah, lady Sloan Klein, 4,000 of these things in the basement of her home in Kansas. She has them on floppy disk, on CD. There's branded AOL discs like her prized Marvel Spider-Man disc and foreign AOL discs, which she got from her friends in Canada and Argentina. Mm. She says, I probably have the most extensive, uh, one of the most extensive collections. Well, me and Bustam, she said. Halim, whose collection runs at least 3,000 discs, started collecting in 1999, he said, because they were free. And he liked the idea of a hobby that didn't require spending any money. <laughs> unlike, unlike other collectors who've been known to shell out upwards of $100 on an ultra-rare CD, Halim says he's never paid more than a few bucks for a disc. Well, Inst- somebody's paying something. Instead, he'd make frequent trips, uh, trips to the swap meet in Oakland, where there was a section devoted to all kinds of computer-related junk. And he'd find wonderful treasures in there. 855 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is $8 higher at $1,166 per ounce. Silver is up $0.14 cents at $16.04 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $245. US dollars. We are closed for the market holiday and will return on Tuesday. You can visit our online store anytime at rrbi.co. That's rrbi.co. Or follow us on Twitter at Full Meta Liberty. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. 
It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.lrn.fm. That's Facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us on the radio waves. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we've got Skype as well. It's Skype username LRN.FM. And we're discussing the AOL disc collectors. Yes, these people exist. Now, there probably aren't too many of them because when you go and look for AOL discs on eBay, even though there are a bunch of them there, none of them are getting bids. So clearly there's not a very large marketplace for used AOL discs, but some of these people have paid upwards of $100 to acquire what is purportedly a rare AOL installation disc. Now, of course, any of you who are over the age of 20 probably are well familiar with the ubiquitous, once ubiquitous AOL discs that were freely mailed through uh, throughout the United States and other countries of the world on what seemed like a weekly basis. I mean, Even I could, more. I could swear these things came into my house every single week. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Uh, maybe you remember differently, but you're welcome to join us here. Also on Skype, our Skype username is lrn.fm. And if you're out there getting a good laugh about these AOL disc collectors, but uh, you're not looking at yourself, what is it that you collect that maybe... It's taken up a little bit too much space. It's gone a little bit too far. Have you gone overboard uh, with your collection? Or do you embrace it completely? Like, oh, well, you know, this is what I do. This is my thing. I collect. You might as well. I mean, you know, if I, there, there's certain things you can do with your life, and one of those things is collecting stuff. Uh, so here's something you can collect. Free Talk Live t-shirt. Go to gear.freetalklive.com and uh, you can pre-order the brand new Free Talk Live logo shirt. Also, there's one that says taxes are theft on the front. And uh, you can pre place your pre-order. They're affordable. The shipping is uh, is also affordable over at gear.freetalklive.com. Order by October 31st and you'll be part of the initial run of shirts. It's been close to a decade since we've had Free Talk Live shirts available online for sale. And so now you can get them again over at gear.freetalklive.com. That's gear.freetalklive.com. But like a lot of uh, things, uh, or unlike a lot of collections, these are, are shirts or things you want to wear. You know, you want to you want to put them on, not necessarily hang them in a room somewhere, because the, pro, the point of wearing shirts is to advertise your favorite show, right? They don't come in uh, sort of great packaging that you might want to keep, because something that's in better packaging is more likely to, uh, you know, elicit collecting. Mm. Um, and this, I believe, is what the AOL thing's coming from, is they had kind of cool packaging. In some cases, they had tins, they had the uh, CD cases with, uh, you know, good graphics and a variety of things. And that's why people want to keep them is, is that they, they see value in it. Whereas the t-shirt, they're going to come in a bag. You're going to just yeah. send it a box and it's a bag and you should wear it. That's what it's for. But somebody's going to put it away as though it's going to be worth a mint in the future. I don't know. I've had people collect my original business cards. Is that right? Yeah. I've, that's I, weird. Can I have them? Well, they wanted to have it. And Okay, here you go. Yeah. Did so, make you sign it? I think I did. I think I did nice. sign it, yeah. Uh, so, well, and that's the thing with uh, collections is you don't know. 
you know, you, you, you know, some new toy comes out or whatever, and you don't know if that's going to be a big thing, if or you know, if that particular line of Spider-Man toys is going to be a valuable one in the future. Odds are good it's not, but that factor that you never know is something that I think spurs more collections. It's like, oh, this new toy is coming out. I've got to snatch them up and hold on to them in case they become valuable. Someday. You can get a nose for certain things um, that uh, you know that they have. They're they're sort of the first of something. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they represent the new thing that's coming out. So if you, for instance, you got the Iron Man toy for the new Iron Man movie that came out back, you know, what has it been now? Um, almost 10 years. And then you would sort of know that this is going, if the Marvel franchise goes somewhere, and the Marvel Iron Man movie was great. Um, so you'd be like, yeah, this is going to go somewhere. So you could have picked that out and said, if I keep this in the box, it's going to be worth more in the future. And, Maybe. Uh, well, okay. Here's a little advice for you. When, uh, if you want to do some collecting, and I know you don't, Christmas is going to roll around and Star Wars is going to be coming out. You find the main characters from this Star Wars mm-hmm. movie. You get their the best figure for those characters, probably the biggest, most articulated figure. You leave it in the box if you want to collect. Yeah. That's going to, uh, you know, that's going to allow you to get the biggest chance of, of a return. It'll probably at the very least hold its value. Right? It'll do like, more than that. Well, you don't know. You really well, don't know. No, you, you. Here's the reason that they do, Ian, is because in three years, whether or not you, uh, if you didn't get it back then, mm-hmm. and now you want it, you know it's going to cost more. Okay. So you're going to be willing to pay three but or five it, times it, as much. Is it more so uh, compared to inflation or whatever? I don't know. Yeah, I'm just telling you that having done your this, mileage may vary. Look, right? Ian, I worked. Which one of us worked at a, a comic book store for six years? I'm telling yeah. you, there's a few things that you can kind of see how these things go. You hate collections. So that's you're warning true. people. Yes, you, you no, do. That's not true. I've just, you know, I've moved on uh, past them. But that's not true did you, what, what did you're you saying, collect? Mark. That's not true what you're saying. Uh, the you know, there were some. I've had some garbage pail kids in my okay, past. You did, yeah. I ended up giving those away. But and you know, Magic the Gathering cards. But, uh, yeah, I bought Johnson's brother's uh, old collection of those. I've still got those sitting on a shelf. But, but you use them. Not really. I haven't used, used them to. in years. Um, I but remember it, when you they did. They just sit there on the shelf. Uh, I'll go in every now and then I'll use them. Like every five years, I'll get into a mood to play some Magic the Gathering, and that's about it. And it's nice to have them in that case. But, Mark, I remember buying like uh, one of the editions of the Garbage Pail Kids, the full mm-hmm. set of them, and it wasn't very expensive. And I imagine it would have been more expensive buying uh, all of the packs in advance or whatever to try to get that that collection put together. But that edition, it, you know, it may or may not be... It wasn't be... the first edition, mind you. Right. I'll give you that. That's what I'm saying is is that you kind of got to get a nose for these mm-hmm. things. And that's why I'm saying the first in it, the, what are the prequel, the postquels of the yeah. uh, the Star Wars is coming out. But now even it's those gonna... won't be as valuable as the original Star Wars. No, because... they won't be immediately but you need there's a new generation that my son is going to go with me to chris uh, at christmas time uh-huh. to see star wars at an imax theater we're going to bring our little earplugs because those imax things are too loud um and oh, we're going to wow. watch uh, the, his he's going to watch like i did um you know star wars for the first time he's going to get it imprinted on him that this is important that's going to be his star wars movie he's going to go back he's going to watch the new hope and he's going to like this is garbage <laughs> but he's gonna see this one and it's gonna be his and that's gonna be special i don't know star wars those are the collectors up. that will um matter in five or ten years yeah but you don't think that they are gonna have uh, an interest in the old stuff because it's gonna be obvious that the luke skywalker mint condition uh what is it plastic figurine or whatever is going to be more valuable, right? It's than wh- older whoever the new already. Is. But but yeah. what you need to do is compare whoever the main character of uh, Star Wars this year at twenty years out to the Luke one at twenty years out, and then see what you know makes sense. I don't know, and it doesn't make a difference. It's still go. I'm. This is a prediction, yeah. but it's still going to be well worth the investment and probably outperform the stock you bought on that day. You buy a hmm. stock that day, you buy a bond that day, I'll and you, you buy yeah. and you buy an equal number uh, you know amount in dollars of these Star yeah. Wars figures and you will make your money but back in the Star Wars figures. You're talking about a different kind of uh, collector. You're talking about the kind of collector who's an investing kind of collector, yes. a person who's intending to get a return. It's not so much an obsession for them as it is like somebody who wants to collect everything that says Star Wars on it. Sure. Right? So that's the kind of collections we're talking about here with this AOL CD collection where, you know, of these thousands Thousands of discs. There may be f- a few of them that have some value to someone, but for the most part, 
you know, they couldn't be resold for the the amount it would cost to ship them somewhere. I mean, have you have you ever tried to lift a box of records before, like a, a decent tote full of records? It's there, it's That's really heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Uh, so you know, same thing with throwing a bunch of CDs into a, to a tote. You know, it wouldn't even be worth the cost of actually sending it anywhere. Uh, so back to the story here from Vice.com. Now. One of these guys has 3,000 of these discs, and he went to a swap meets, went to swap meets regularly to get them, and he'd find every now and then a rare AOL disc for $1, which he says is better than anything he could find on eBay and for a fraction of the price. Each morning, Mr. Halim says he'd spend about an hour admiring his collection, <laughs> organizing the discs by their serial numbers, and updating his website, <laughs> cdcult.com, as in C-U-L-T, cult. I, uh, I, I have a big fish tank that I used to have in my dining room, and I would uh, wake up, I'd have my coffee, and I'd have my uh, toast um, sitting, and I'd just watch my fish. I had a girlfriend at the time. And That's better than looking at CDs. I want to hear the rest of your story about fishes uh, or fishies and your girlfriend. 855 450 free. That's our toll free number. If you want to tell us your collecting story, 855 450 3733. It's Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock's CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of .211 Bitcoin or more. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. 
The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org where you can contribute via various methods including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll free, 855-450-3733. That is if you can stop admiring your collection for a moment and uh, pick up the phone. This one guy is it spends an hour a day admiring his AOL CD collection. He says that he spends an hour admiring and then organizing the discs by their serial numbers, updating his website, cdcult.com. Uh, maybe you want to share your story of your obsession uh, with your collection. Is it uh, still going? Is it... Uh, is it occupying a significant portion of your time on a daily basis? Has it gone too far? At what point does it become too much? Uh, when it occupies an entire room of your home or starts to spill out into a storage facility, perhaps? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. And, you know, I think it's interesting about this topic is I think it affects a lot of people I mean, everybody does it, right? Like, even I still, I try to actively not collect things, but, you know, I still have some things. I don't have any of these full-on collections like you were talking about, Mark, and I uh, I try to want to simplify my life and, and remove these things from my life as much as possible. Uh, I like the idea of not having a bunch of stuff, and at, at times I have had larger collections of things, and I'm glad to not have them anymore. But uh, I think first world problems. Yeah, it is totally a first world problem, and I think that uh, that it affects a lot of people. And normally, a, a good talk show topic is something that people can relate to. You know, like if you get on the radio and you talk about some Republican presidential candidate, most people don't care about that. They don't relate to that. The average person doesn't pay attention to it. Only political junkies are interested in that kind of thing. And so that's a very niche topic. But if you talk about something like food, well, everybody eats, you know, or you talk about uh, things that people can relate to, then normally they're fairly good uh, call-related topics. But no one wants to talk about their uh, their collections and their habits. So if you don't want to talk about your own, talk about other people's. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. More on the AOL collectors here from vice.com. Well, you said you wanted to hear the uh, the story. Oh, you have a, a story. Yeah. You know, this guy was talking about how he, uh, you know, and spend about an hour every morning looking at the serial numbers of his AOL CDs, just yes. to admiring them and no, organizing them, organizing and them, admiring and doing his thing with them. And um, I was just <laughs> amused by this because. I had at one point I had uh, you know a fish tank right in my dining room. Um, I live in a different house now and mm. it doesn't really fit there. But I used to get my coffee and my toast and I would just sort of do a morning meditation yeah. of watching my fish and enjoying my that cup of coffee. That sounds relaxing. Yeah, um, I had a girlfriend at the time who thought this was the most boring thing. Like well, she, she just, probably didn't meditate. Um, actually, she did, but she just didn't find that um, you know uh. that that particular activity. I guess she wanted to have a conversation, and uh, you know that early in the morning, I, I was living by myself for a long time. I didn't, you know, right. I just didn't want to have a conversation at that time. So anyway, that's let's what go to it made Joe. Me think of. We'll talk more about the AOL disc collectors here. Joe, you're on from Texas, listening via the LRN app. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello. Welcome. You're on the air. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I have a question for Mark. Mark, I heard you talk about how your son uh, collects Legos, correct? Yeah, he's a big uh, Lego fan. This was one of mine as a younger kid, too. Yeah, I'm also a huge collector of Legos, and I don't know if you know this, but you should encourage your son to uh, save those Lego figures because they go for top dollar uh, like in the future because they they become rare. And if you look on eBay, you see that these little mini figures, you, you may buy them for $3 now. But they'll go up for like twenty dollars each. Like when you say the years, figures, do you mean the little guys or the full set that yeah. you're putting together? No, I'm I'm talking about the little guys. The little those guys. guys. The value of those. Yeah, I, I collect. I have a huge Lego collection. If I were to sell them off, 
I probably get you know a nice whop of cash. So um, this is one thing I don't want uh, for him is to get the mindset of a collector where he's attempting to preserve these things. Now, I don't, I'm not. For Why not? That could make him some money. right? I'm not for destroying toys yeah. for any by any stretch of the imagination. But I also think that if you're going to have the shield helicarrier, that you need to play, to play with, it with the kid. shield helicarrier, especially if you're a seven year old. Um, so I don't I'm careful to, you know, how I because I believe this kid is essentially a little clone of me, the way he is and i think that he definitely has that collector gene if he's if he's not careful so i don't want to scare him into not having fun with his uh lego figures what kind do they have a rating system as far as uh, value for these things goes i mean is it like you know the condition of them well as long as the arms aren't too loose the legs as long as they come with other parts the figures it's the figures that people go crazy for yeah they eat. seem to if you go and eat yeah, there's figures that go for five hundred dollars each. Wow! Look it up on eBay. Can you yeah, think of I'm one of them that goes for five hundred? Uh, there's a you just look up a special Marvel edition figures. Oh. They got those on, on eBay. That's like comic, amazing comic to me. Heroes. Uh, yeah. The reason I got out when I was a kid, I had Lego sets and you know had them all put together and on shelves in my room. So I I had a Lego collection. Uh, and the reason I ended up quitting that was because, one, it was expensive to buy the Legos, and two, yeah. dusting them was the worst because uh, with the, with Legos, you know, they got all those little bumps on them, right? And so it's harder than anything else to actually get those Legos clean. You know, you leave those things out, they just collect, collect, collect dust, and, of course, the more of them you have, the more surface area you actually have to dust, and it becomes a real chore. That's why I gave it up. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, yeah just check it out, I mean... I want to share with you guys my extensive Lego collection. <laughs> how many how many figurines do you have, Joe? And how long have you been at it? Well, I've been I've been I'm 34. I've been collecting since I was like 12. Yep. I probably have maybe it, figure wise maybe like about 2,000 figures around that range. Wow. So, do you actually have any of the sets? You know, the things that the figures came with, or is it just figures, pure figure collection? No. No, I got the sets, but most of the sets, um, they they're all like crumbled. They're what do you call it? They're they're apart and they're put in a bin box. And the figures are preserved in like a plastic uh, sandwich bag. I keep them in. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's uh, as good as anything to keep them uh, preserved. Yeah. Good luck with selling that in the future. That sounds like an interesting. Uh, it sounds like a very unique collection, Joe. Thanks for calling and sharing that tonight. That's what that's kind of what I was looking for. Is like, you know, what are you into? I, I, I don't make fun of people for, well, okay, the AOL people, I'll make fun of them. But, uh, you know, if you're into a collection, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. Go for it. Have I, fun with it. I would Just, think that the Legos are a good choice because they, um, this is a this is a toy that's still on the upswing. Um, they're constantly. Oh, my God, they're um, huge. Yeah, well, they, but they were big when we were kids, too. Yeah. If now I'd there's have, stores about Lego. Yeah. We went to the Disney World. There's like a whole Lego store that's open till midnight, and. There's kids in there constantly. It's just a, a madhouse. The people running the cash register can't get a moment to breathe. No, they were they were like giving numbers or something like that for you to get in line to give them money. Yeah. It was incredible. They're just their queuing system for paying right. for things. And I you know, as you remember that I grabbed a Lego uh, set for, for Jack while I was there. Right. Was it, it a Star Wars or something? It like was that? a Star Wars yeah. one, I think of the little yellow Jedi um, spacecraft thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, he just loves these things. And when daddy comes home from a trip, it's like Likely he'll have something for him, mm -hmm. so you know it makes coming home that much more exciting. And uh, yeah, I mean he just digs these things. I'm not surprised that the minifigures are pretty valuable. I haven't been able to find one that's uh, triple digits as far as uh, they're all value. being hoarded. Yeah, but I don't, you know, I don't know that, uh, you know, I can't verify or deny that this is the well. Just because one's on, just because there's not one for sale at the moment on the market, doesn't mean that if one popped up tomorrow, that it wouldn't get bid up to five hundred bucks. You know. Indeed. If they're that rare, then they're probably being hoarded by the people who know them best, would be my guess. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can also Skype into the show. It's Skype username LRN.FM. Uh, so the AOL CD collector, uh, let's see here. One guy, Mr. Halim, said that he would then head to his job after spending an hour uh, sort of admiring him and organizing his collection. This is a daily thing for him where all of his coworkers knew about his collecting obsession because he'd asked them to give them or to give him their AOL CDs and for the most part they did since he was basically asking for this junk mail 
Uh, his favorite CD is one that an employee snagged at a computer convention in Japan. It's a plain-looking disc with very little art on the packaging, but it's rare. No one who wasn't at that convention has a copy. He said, quote, I probably had at one point at least 20,000 CDs, mainly from the donations from his coworkers, saying that he threw a lot of them away because they were copies. AOL disc collecting isn't about quantity. It's about diversity. There were AOL discs in every color. Yeah, discs, I hope it's not about quantity because uh, there'd be a lot of that stuff. Discs still in all kinds of designs, branded discs. Larkin's favorite CD is one from a Frisbee partnership. Ones in weird packaging, like a one-time disc design that came in a plastic purse. Unique designs were deter determined by subtle differences in the color, design, and text. Two discs might look alike, except one promises 500 hours free, and the other only offers 200 hours free. <laughs> Within one sub-style, the gold edition, for example, there might be 15 variations in the text. Those all count as unique designs, which can be cataloged by the serial numbers on the discs. Sloan Klein says there were hundreds of designs and about 20 of them, or 20% of them, excuse me, were the rare ones. Those are what we fought over. 855 450 free. What's your collection? You want to share it with the world? We're here for you. 855 450 3733. And have you beaten the collecting habit as well? When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her friend young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.99 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,166 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $248. Antiwar.com reports, as with most high-profile militant leaders, Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State has had his share of claimed deaths and claimed mortal woundings at the hand of various forces he is at war with. His fate is once again uncertain as the Iraqi military claims it hit a the Islamic State convoy in which he was traveling. According to a statement from the Iraqi military, forces struck the convoy in the far west of the Anbar province and that Baghdadi was heading 
responding to a meeting in Carbella. They claim the meeting itself was also attacked, killing several unnamed the Islamic State officials. Iraqi officials say they are uncertain of Baghdadi's condition and that he was carried away from the site of the strike in a vehicle. The Pentagon also issued a statement saying they can't confirm any reports of Baghdadi being killed or even wounded in the attack. The oft-reported demise of Baghdadi has raised a lot of questions about how much his death or incapacitation would really matter to the Islamic State. Analysts have suggested the Islamic State has a very deep bench of potential leaders, which explains why a large number of slain the Islamic State leaders have not amounted to much. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a retired FBI agent and a prosecutor released independent reports ruling the shooting death of 12-year-old Tamir Rice by Cleveland police as justified ahead of a grand jury decision. The reports were prepared for Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Timothy J. McGinty. A grand jury will decide if a police officer and his partner will face criminal charges over the death of Tamir Rice. Tamir was shot to death while playing with a pellet gun in a Cleveland park last November. Responding to a 911 call about a guy with a pistol that was probably fake, police officer Timothy Lohman fired several shots at Rice two seconds after arriving on the scene. In June, a Cleveland judge found probable cause for murder charges, involuntary manslaughter, reckless homicide, negligent homicide, and dereliction of duty after conducting a non-binding legal review of the case against Lohman and his partner Frank Garmbach. Colorado prosecutor Lamar Sims, senior chief deputy district attorney in Denver, said that Lohman's decision was objectively reasonable. Sims wrote in his report, there can be no doubt that Rice's death was tragic and indeed, when one considers his age, heartbreaking. However, I conclude that Officer Lohman's belief that Rice posed a threat of serious physical harm or death was objectively reasonable, as was his response to that perceived threat. An attorney for Tamir Rice's family accused the experts of being pro-police and attempting to whitewash Tamir's death. The Rice family has continuously said police acted too quickly without properly assessing the situation after arriving on scene. Scene. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal. The search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co. Reuters reports California will ban public schools from naming their sports teams Redskins, a name seen as a slur against Native Americans. However, the state will not stop municipalities from naming parks and buildings after Confederate heroes. Advocates for Native Americans welcomed the decision to ban the term Redskins. California is the first state in the nation to enact a statewide ban on the term, although individual school districts in Houston, Texas and Madison, Wisconsin have already done so. In another racially sensitive area. However, California Governor Jerry Brown vetoed a bill to ban naming public property after Confederate heroes. Brown, who last year signed a bill outlawing the sale of faux Confederate currency at the state capital gift shop, said local decision makers should choose names for schools and parks. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Today's fitness trackers can tell how far you're running, but tomorrow's can tell you why you're running. The new Nike Run Logic Plus pinpoints the desperate psychological demons at the root of your exercise routine. Tech Trends reporter Aaron Vaughn has more. It's a problem all runners face. You run and you run and you run, but it's never enough. No matter how many miles you put in, that gnawing ache at your soul never goes away. Now Nike's engineers have found a way for runners to use that existential pain to push themselves even farther. Users keep the device on their wrist at all times. It not only records running times and distances, it also analyzes all of the user's social interactions and emotional patterns. It then creates a unique, detailed profile that dredges the inspiring well of inner turmoil inside every runner. 
Early users say they notice a big impact on their workout. I started marathoning when I was 28. I thought it was time to get in shape, but then once I realized I was actually running from my meaningless job in ad sales, I started running a lot more, like, all the time. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. It's Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program, talking about collections in general, the obsession that some people have with having all of everything or of one particular type of thing. And what started the conversation is a story over at Vice.com. Inside the world of the AOL CD collectors, the what they call the intense insular world of the AOL CD collectors, because there really aren't too, too many people who collect AOL CDs, but of those who do, they tend to have thousands of them. Uh, and it's Ian and Mark in the studio here, and we actually had a guy call in to share his collection with us. He's got the Lego Guys not the necessarily the the full sets. He has those too, but his real collection, the pride of his collection, is the little guys, the you know, smiley face Lego guys. And apparently, some of them are worth quite a bit of money, like the ones that starred in the Lego Movie, right? The minifigs is what they're called. I haven't seen the movie. I didn't know it was a name. There was a name for them. Minifigs. Yeah, minifigs. As in minifigurines. Yeah, Lego minifigurines, huh. also known as minifigs. Now, my son recently acquired and saved his money and got um, on his own through a purse dot, uh, excuse me, save at purse dot com or purse dot free talk live dot com. Uh, you can go at either one of those. He saved a great deal getting the. Um, the the Shield Helicarrier. He had been wanting this. It's three hundred and fifty dollars. So his twenty something percent discount, uh, you know, was, was pretty sizable. But one thing I learned is, is apparently there are figures that are smaller than the minifigs. Really? Yes. He has figures that are. What do I they mean, call them? Choking hazards? <laughs> they, I, they didn't mention. They didn't call them that specifically. But you wouldn't choke on this. You could swallow this without a problem. Huh. It's much smaller so than a small. capsule. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. They're and they fit onto one little uh, what they call I guess, a stud. I think is what they call the, uh, yeah. the Lego things. Um, anyway, they'll fit onto one of those. But they actually, um, you know, the base of them is significantly larger in order to fit than the figurine than itself. The figurine. I so gotcha. the, the figures are. Uh, thinner than a stud is. So if you want to share your obsession uh, here with our international audience, you can join us toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And at what point has it gone too far? Is it, you know, when it starts, you run out of room and you realize that you now need a storage facility in order to house your collection? And would that, I think that would be an indicator, right? Because then you can't show it off. You know, if it's just sitting in a storage facility, it's not something that you can you could even really regularly uh, visit and uh, and appreciate, let alone a guest to your home, for instance. Let's go to Sherol, listening in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live uh, to WRMN. Hello, Sherol. Actually, it's Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl. I apologize. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I I have um, a big collection of books. Any specific types of books or just the books you like to read? Um, it's actually a lot of different. I'll, I'll collect, I'll find different authors, and then I want to get all their books that yeah. they've written. Because you, you start reading books and, and certain authors, and you're like, oh, wait, I like that one. And then you just kind of collect all their books. I have a ton of books, and I'm I, my husband's like, you need to weed them down a little bit. I, I have one room. It's like you can barely get in there because I have so many books. Now, are you collecting, uh, let's say you're collecting one author. Let's say Stephen King, big uh, pop, popular author. There are obviously different ver uh, varieties or variations, uh, releases, if you will. What do they call them? I'm spacing on the word. Editions. Uh, editions, thank you, of, uh, of these books. So it'll be the same book with the same text inside it, but the cover is different. You know, this version that came out in 1994 had a different cover than uh, the version that came out in 1997, for instance. So do you find yourself with a desire to collect all of the variants of that art, of that particular author's book series, or is just one of each is enough? One of each of what he has written, and most of them, usually when they're first print, we would buy them just because I would... Actually, I like Stephen King, and so I would get a lot of his. And But I've... 
um, I used to just like the Stephen King and the Dean Kuntz type stuff, and then I started changing to different type of authors and different genders or genres. And so I wound up with a wide variety because I have a lot of Clive Costler books and stuff like that. So, too. so is it your plan? Do you have a plan for this? Is it something you want to sell later on down the line or something that you want to pass on to your children? Uh, what's your plan for these books? Well, if we ever moved away where there was no library, I would have my own library. That's true. <laughs> my own personal library. And, you know, that's kind of a cool thing. I mean, I think there, this is something that people have had for a long time is libraries, and many of them are very, very large and, uh, and extensive. And I have a lot of, um, like, I just keep the books that I like, and, uh, you know, as a result, I have a lot of books on my shelf and probably a few too many. My wife makes me go about once a year and uh, pare them down because she doesn't want to build more shelving. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at least I don't want to build more I was going to say, you got your wife building your shelving for you. Yeah, she probably, I don't want to build the shelving and she won't let me just pile them up, I guess is what the uh, the, the answer to that is. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel it. I, I want these particular authors that I like and I want, and I, you know, if I happen to have the book, I'll keep them kind of together on the shelf and you could probably talk me into another book that i'd read by that author to putting it up there on the shelf rather than getting rid of them cheryl thanks for calling and cheryl. sharing your thoughts cheryl i'm sorry it's spelled differently here on, the, yeah. on this call the screening software <laughs> thanks for the call cheryl i appreciate it uh i was gonna say i never heard of a cheryl before but yeah you know it's the first time for everything couldn't tell you uh, so now book collections i would say those would be fairly common right now lego man collections probably fairly uncommon do you have an uncommon collection that you want to share with us? What is a what is it that you collect that you don't think very many other people do? Do you have a a niche collection, something that's really you know special to you, but maybe wouldn't necessarily like these AOL CDs? They're not really worth anything to anyone because they were essentially garbage. Uh, but is it special to you? And have you become super obsessed with whatever that is? If you want to share that with us, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Back to the story from Vice.com. It's not that AOL CD collecting was competitive per se, just that where there is only a handful of people who care about your hobby, every small victory is or failure is amplified. Halim and Sloan Klein both have tin packaged AOL CDs in their collections, but Sloan Klein's is still in the original wrapping. Something that Halim resents. When in 2002, <laughs> AOL invited Sloane Klein and her family to a party in New York for the launch of AOL version 8, Halim fumed with jealousy. He said, I hated her for that. I was so jealous. Uh, for her part, Sloane said the party was a blast. She said they were so thrilled that someone was collecting their discs instead of shooting bullet holes through them that they invited us to their party. <laughs> There's, it's nice of them to invite, uh, That's cool. invite to the party. But, yeah. There's no record of how many different styles of Wouldn't AOL. stop me from shooting holes in an AOL disc, though. No one knows how many different styles of AOL discs were distributed. There's no record of that. But Jan Brandt, AOL's former chief marketing officer, estimates the number is in the thousands. On a Quora thread, Brandt said the marketing campaign cost more than $300 million, but it was worth it. She says, we were logging in new subscribers at the rate of one every six seconds. It's this ubiquity, the annoying success of their campaign that makes AOL CDs important to remember, according to Jason Scott, a digital historian with the Internet Archive. That's important to remember, yeah. They were at one time half. This is unbelievable. Half of all of the CDs produced in the United States. Wow, that is amazing. So the story of AOL discs is part of the story of software, and it's important for me to get them, he says. There's already a small collection of discs catalog at the Smithsonian's Museum of American History, but Scott wants his own. In May, he put his own request to amass old AOL CDs on behalf of the Internet Archive. The discs are interesting, he says, because their evolution traces a history of the Internet. The oldest discs promised access to a virgin Internet, but newer ones said things like, come back, as people's relationship to the Internet changed. So did AOL discs. Scott has amassed about 300 CDs in fa uh, so far, all via donation. For a collector, there's often an issue where, like, they only made 20 Beanie Babies with this one signature, so now each of those is worth a ridiculous amount. AOL collecting isn't like that, he explains. There's no value in that market. Earlier this year, Verizon acquired AOL for $4.4 billion. Amazing that it was worth that much. 
It signals the official end of an era when AOL wasn't just a gateway to the internet, it was the internet. The kind of end to the AOL story make collectors all the more sentimental about their discs, like precious artifacts in a technologically advanced world. More on collecting, and if you've got a story you want to share about your collection or someone you've known and their obsession, it's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Ricky LeBlanc admitted in Mass only. Sokolov Law LLC, Chestnut Hill, Mass. Ken Levan, responsible attorney in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Greg Hobby, New Jersey. The choice of lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements. While this firm maintains joint responsibility, most cases of this type are referred to other attorneys for principal responsibility. If you know what mesothelioma is, you or someone you love has likely been impacted by this devastating cancer. You may be entitled to compensation. Call Sokolov Law today. 1-800-218-HELP. The only known cause of mesothelioma is asbestos exposure. Thousands of hardworking men and women, including many U.S. veterans and industrial workers, have been diagnosed with mesothelioma because manufacturers knew the dangers but put profits ahead of people. An estimated $30 billion in court order trust has been set aside to pay money to asbestos victims. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call now. You may be entitled to receive compensation without ever going to court or filing a lawsuit. Call for a free legal consultation at 1-800-218-HELP. That's 1-800-218-HELP. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Yeah! It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free 
Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got me, Ian. And me, Mark. And Mark, tell me about My Magic Mud. They're back. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited about My Magic Mud. And, um, you know, you may not have heard of it, but we did, we used to talk about it here on the show. They were a longtime advertiser. They've uh, been sort of repurposing to do, to go into retail. And they've been focusing all their time and their energy into that. And they're now go, they're now in re- retailing in, in different stores, and it's, uh, it's a very exciting. exciting time for them. It's a great product. It is a great product. Um, what it is is it's activated charcoal made from uh, coconut husks. And if you know anything about carbon, you know that carbon binds with things. It's a tooth whitener, in a, and it really surprised me because, you know, lots of products out there claim to be tooth whiteners. So much bunk. In my opinion, there's uh, I, so much bunk out there in the market. I don't know whether they are or not. I haven't used them, but I do know that they're you know harsh chemicals that I'm not particularly interested in, in mm-hmm. using. And um, I can say that the My Magic Mud in four applications. In the first application, I could see a difference. Obviously, you know they told me it was a tooth whitener, so I was going to pay close attention. And I drink a bunch of coffee. Um, by the fourth application, all the stains off my teeth were gone. And it was just amazing to me. And what it does also is it polishes your teeth and it makes them feel like, you know, that day you come back from the hygienist and, oh, my teeth feel hmm, so much cleaner than they normally do. They always feel that way if you're using My Magic Mud. So I would recommend use it every day for a month and then switch off to like I did once every three days or something like that. You'll find that you will never not want to have it again because your teeth... Your teeth get used. You get used to your teeth being this clean. And right now, when you rub your 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 tongue along your teeth, you're gonna find a certain amount of texture or whatever. Not mine. Yeah. Not mine because I use my magic mud, and I'm just excited as I could possibly be about it. There's a coupon code FTL if you go to mymagicmud.com for oh. you because I believe you should try this. Coupon code FTL, mymagicmud.com. You save 20% off as a thank you to the Free Talk Live listeners and the Liberty wow. community at large who were so supportive in the very beginning. And so there you go. There's a new hygienic bamboo applicator to easily dispense the mud under your tongue instead of dipping your toothbrush into the powder, which I'll probably continue to do um, forever because that's the way I learned how to do it. And I don't change (laughs) for any of these newfangled inventions. However, you will probably like the new thing uh, better because it's a light powder and it does need to be uh, controlled. So mymagicmud.com, coupon code FTL. Awesome. Their new website looks really cool. It does look great. <laughs> they've done I'm a great so job. excited with these people for these people and and the success they've had and all because of Free Talk Live, you know? Oh, cut it out. It's because of great product. <laughs> I mean, if, you don't, you know, if we were pushing a crappy pro- product, no, it wouldn't there's no do, way. There's no way it doesn't go well. anywhere. Our, our listeners are very discerning and yeah, they'll try things because we talk about them. And I really appreciate our listeners for that. But they'll let us know if they don't like something. And yeah. I appreciate that, too. All I right. love this. Uh, MyMagicMud.com. Coupon code was FTL? FTL, yeah. All right, cool, for 20% off. Uh, so you, back to the AOL collectors. Fascinating stuff here from Vice.com about an unusual uh, habit of collecting that I'd never heard of before, but apparently a few people are into this. The You know, those garbage discs that you're sent from AOL that went straight into the trash can probably for most of you? Well, some people were holding on to those and even asking their friends to give them theirs, going to flea markets and, you know, places like that to try to find the rare AOL CDs. They've got thousands of them, and collecting is based on nostalgia. People collect Pez dispensers, says Vice.com, and stamps and tin lunchboxes, not because they're inherently valuable or interesting, but because they remind people of a time in their life. And that's why Sloane Klein has kept her collection, which today sits filed away in wire CD racks in her basement, mostly in their original packaging. She says, I really believe that maybe 10 years, 15 years from now, people who remembered AOL discs from fifth grade or had their first internet experience with it, they're going to look back and say, I remember that. And I really believe that these discs will be worth something. (laughs) How good for her. Uh, uh, I guess you got to tell yourself something to justify your habits. Larkin doesn't think the discs will ever be worth anything. This is another one of the collectors, and neither does Halim. But neither of them are ready to give up their collections. It's worth something to them. Sometimes Halim will just... That's what a collection should be, worth something to you. Exactly. Sometimes Halim will just sit and stare at the discs with their geometric designs. (laughs) Halim's really into this stuff, man. (laughs) And pass hours that way. He said, it's hard to explain... 
but they're just so beautiful to me. <laughs> this is the guy that started collecting them because they were free. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. That's the guy. Good for him. There you go. Vice.com. Always interesting content over there at Vice. And uh, if you want to share your thoughts, you're certainly welcome to do so. In other news, the Uber driver, the illegal Uber driver is still on the streets in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I can't play this video for you because it's profane. Uh, just full of the F-bomb. Yeah, I just I didn't have time to edit it today. It would have taken a while to do because there are multiple F-bombs in the video. And it's actually not a video, but it's on YouTube, so it appears like a video. But there's no actual uh, recording of what happened to the illegal Uber driver. He was in Portsmouth. He was getting ready to pick up some customers outside of a local tavern. And the bouncer of the tavern starts to give him a hard time. And the bouncer further then goes and snitches on him openly, like he knew what was happening. The bouncer goes to a nearby Portsmouth cop and informs him that, hey, hey, there's an Uber driver over there. Because right now in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, there's a set of regulations that has been passed to supposedly, uh, the idea from the bureaucrats, they'll tell you that, oh, we want Uber to operate in Portsmouth, but we just want them to do it like we want them to. You, yeah, sure. You need to come here and jump we through We own the hoops. geographic area known as Portsmouth, and if you want to drive people around for money, yeah. you can drive people. And you can earn money, but you can't drive people around and earn money doing it without our special permission. Because exactly. we're the bosses here and, like, basically the crime bosses. Interestingly, they did, at the same time as creating regulations to regulate Uber, they actually did deregulate the taxicab business somewhat in Portsmouth. Good for them. So they got, I think they got rid of the medallions or they got a, a couple things that changed that it made it easier to be a cabbie uh, in Portsmouth. But they made it impossible, or not impossible, but more difficult than Uber would like for Uber to come in and legally do business in the city. So ultimately, as an Uber driver in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, you are violating the city's regulations by taking passengers from point A to point B for, for, uh, for a fee. And so the, uh, the punishment for this is a $500 fee or $500 fine, $500 summons, if you will, that could be as high as $1,000. So a minimum of $500 for, the, I think, the first offense, and then maybe if you get caught after that, it might go up to $1,000. And the news recently about this, prior to this interaction between the driver and the cop, which I'll tell you about here in a moment, but the previous news story that came out of freekeen.com about this uh, this continuing saga was that the city is now openly threatening to ticket. So for a few weeks there, there were no tickets that were issued. Uh, but now the city's saying, "All right, we're going to do it." Now that if now when our officers see you on or soon, I think they said soon, our officers are going to start ticketing. In this particular instance, this was the first interaction that the illegal Uber driver had with a police officer. And uh, we'll uh, tell you how that came out here in a few moments. You can join us as well at 855-450 free, especially if you think the Uber drivers should be regulated, that they should have to jump through these arbitrary hoops that the government is putting up. And this is not just happening in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's happening all around the world. Uber's had their offices raided in some places. Recently, we've witnessed some of the most catastrophic disasters in history. Be sure to prepare yourself with great tasting, high quality GMO free food that has a 25-year shelf life. Of course, we're talking about the foods from survivalfoodalliance.com. And don't forget, the human body needs up to three quarts of water every day to remain healthy and hydrated. So check out our water bricks at survivalfoodalliance.com. Go to survivalfoodalliance.com or call 877-223-1776. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Money, power, and respect are all yours at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. 
Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. SWCPoker.eu is Bitcoin Poker 2.0, where players can buy chips, play, and cash out anonymously with Bitcoin. No banking, just Bitcoin. Texas Hold'em, Omaha Hold'em, Draw, and many new games, including Chinese Poker. SWC Poker gladly accepts players worldwide, and over 2 million hands of Bitcoin Poker have been dealt at SWCPoker.eu. Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust. SWCPoker.eu. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest Liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, you can join us on the radio waves. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Also, Skype in. Skype username is lrn.fm. Mark, you're getting ready here in a couple weeks to hit the road to Vegas, or in this case, you're flying. But uh, you're going to Vegas for the Bitcoin (laughs) Investor Conference. At some point, we will be on the road while headed to Vegas. That's true. No doubt about it. Um, We're giving away uh, a dozen tickets to the Bitcoin Investor Conference. It's at the D Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, Thursday, October the 29th through Friday, the October the 30th, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Big speakers there, including Trey Smear, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, Stephen Michaels. I'll be emceeing. It'll be the first free, live Free Talk Live event from Las Vegas. You can go right now to our Facebook page and uh, pinned at the top is a post where you can make a comment with a uh, guess uh, of a number between one and a thousand in order to win one of these uh, th- these these tickets. Um, also, you can sign up for some of them at uh, uh, our for our email list at news.freetalklive.com. If you guess the number right, you'll be um, you're avail- you're available to go. You can send a free ticket. You can uh, we'll send you a free ticket to the Bitcoin Investor Conference at the D Hotel in Las Vegas, happening at the end of this month. Only one guest per person is permitted, so make it count. And winners will be announced on Wednesday the twenty first. There you go. It's at our Facebook page at facebook.freetalklive.com, and you can get tickets at bitcoininvestor.com. You can buy your tickets there. All right, so I want to actually, I can play some of this audio of the interaction between the Uber driver and the cop and the bouncer, the snitch bouncer, who is snitching out the Uber driver, trying to get the cops to come over and harass him and ticket him. Uh, I'll get to that here. You can also call in about whatever you want. 
Let's go to Micah calling from Montana. And, uh, Micah, you're on Free Talk Live. Listen to the KINS. Hey, hey guys. Hey. I just wanted to call in. I haven't been listening to tonight's show, but I listened to the weekend shows on the podcast. Yes, sir. And I, I don't know if you had talked about the uh, Sharia login tonight, but I wanted to make some observations. Um, I always find it interesting when people call in and they're, they're all worried about Sharia law being imposed. Um, because of things like, oh, non-Muslims, according to you know their misinterpretations, they can't own land, yet their state religion uh, with the fundamentalists in D.C., you know, you can't own land anyway because of property taxes. If you if yep. you don't pay your your tribute to you know the high priest, they'll come and take your property taxes. The same thing with women and children. Police, police brutality um, doesn't you know the women aren't protected. CPS can come and take children for uh, absolutely no reason, and there's no recourse. Uh, absolutely. I think you're right. The, you know, and, the idea that uh, Sharia law is this sort of specter out there the, as a possibility for the future, but right now you've got a tyrannical government right here, but the idea of Sharia law keeps people distracted from that. Well, the, the, most, the, the biggest one, too, is hilarious because they keep bringing up, oh, well, Muslims, the, Quran, the Quran says that you know, Muslims can lie if it advances their agenda. And then, they're, and then they go and listen to a political debate and think, oh, our guy's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's a little news for you. Politicians can lie if it advances their agenda. Yeah, and, and people need to realize that statism is a religion. And mm-hmm. um, actually, I, I, am, I as a Christian, I embrace and support uh, communities who want to um, voluntarily make law systems that they can come into that subvert or even kind of sidestep the judicial system, because that's exactly what Christians did for the first three centuries. They didn't go to the court. They took care of things themselves, and um, Paul talks about that, and I think even Jesus talks about that. And even in the Jewish system under Rome, there was you know a, a, a plethora of different um, laws at courts that you could go to, depending on what um, interpretation of Torah that you uh, particularly adhere to. So... This whole idea that, you know, oh, we've got to just, you know, watch out for this Sharia law coming in because we don't want to live under this law. Well, they're already living under something much more tyrannical, and they don't even realize it because the statism, the religion of statism is so blinded, blinded people. Great call, Micah. I think you summed it up. Thank you for uh, for sharing with us here tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three, and of course, if you want to know more about uh, Muslims and you know what they actually believe, it helps to actually talk to them. And I think Will Coley and Dobby Barker are doing a great job of reaching out to folks. And they've got a website. It's Muslims the number four Liberty dot org. That's Muslims for Liberty dot uh, org. So I've got the video here. It's actually about a six minute video, but of those six minutes, only about two are something that we can play on the radio because the rest of it is basically an Uber passenger ranting uh, about how awful the cab companies are in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and uh, just, just generally supporting uh, the idea of Uber being an operation. If, uh, if, if, a, if businesses are protected, they're going to, customer service is going to go down. Yeah. Essentially, if you have you know one, two, three taxi cab companies in a given geographic area, and the government disallows anybody else from competing against those companies, you're going to find that those companies, eh, competition, customer service is going to go down and prices are going to go up. So I'm going to play the, the audio that I can play here, and the, the rest of it you can hear the rant of the customer, the drunken, expletive-laden expletive rant. Uh, right now you can see that over at freekeen.com, but here's the part we can play. Uber? I am. Not allowed to come in this town. What do you mean? against the law for you to be picking up cars in this town. $500 fine first time, $1,000 second time. That's the bouncer who's talking to this guy. Yeah, thanks for thanks for the uh, information, Yo, pal. Uber. Uh, you Uber. Well, but they all talk like that over there. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> You've been to the other side of the state by Boston. They talk not like really. that. I've only been there like once. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm, that could have been the cop. It could have been anybody. It's the bouncer. I'll take your the, word for uh, at it. At the bar. So he's, he's, he spots him sitting there waiting for his cut. So he's been called, right? Like Uber. I actually went through the process of becoming an Uber driver last night. You just did. To, to see what it was like. And it was super easy. And so, you know, you have to watch like a 15-minute introductory, you know, and here's your here's how you be an Uber driver kind of video. 
And so, you know, the customer says they want to pick up and then you get there and you wait for the customer usually because usually the customer might be running a little late. They haven't gotten there. And that's what he was doing. So that's when this bouncer started harassing him. Appreciate it. Okay, so the video here says 20 seconds pass, and then the bouncer goes over to the cop and says, Uber! Cop rolls up alongside my passenger door and makes a finger across throat motion like, cut it out. Or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we pick up the audio, I think, short right here. I'm sorry? This is the cop. You're an Uber driver. You know what you're going to do. Yeah, he sounds so much different uh, than the bouncer. You know what you gotta do. He sounds so much different than the, the bouncer. <laughs> he sounds smaller than the bouncer does. Um, I was under the understanding that Uber is in conversation with the city council to get compliance. We're just gonna call it. It says Uber, it's illegal to operate now. Uber is not allowed to operate in town. Um, what if I continue to operate? <laughs> You'll be summoned, he says. Okay. Whatever Uber has to straighten out, get it straightened out, says the cop. You guys are more than welcome to come to town and do what you gotta do. But I got ten taxi drivers coming up to me. I got, and then uh, Chris says, I understand. You're I understand. It is a big issue right now. The cops right about that. This yeah. is uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. A, uh, a relatively in most places, this would go mostly unannounced, untalked about. Uh, if this were, you know, a, a bigger a bigger city, it wouldn't be probably the headline news as it has consistently been. Uh, in Portsmouth right now. And and as Christopher David, the driver in this particular story, points out uh, in some of his updates on Facebook, this is an important, really important thing that he's doing and the other drivers, because he's not the only one now who's disobeying in Portsmouth. Uh, but he points out that if they, if they don't beat this in Portsmouth, other cities around New Hampshire may try the same thing. They may try to regulate Uber out of business as well. So this mm. is like the linchpin operation. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I Armor.com. Come and take it. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, 
illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop Blocker J.P. Freeman, New Mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, Longtime Political Activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Monday, gold is $8 higher at $1,166 per ounce. Silver is up $0.14 cents at $16.04 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $245. US We are closed for the market holiday and will return on Tuesday. You can visit our online store anytime at rrbi.co. That's rrbi.co. Or follow us on Twitter at Full Meta Liberty. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. The illegal Uber driver who has pledged ongoing civil disobedience to continue picking up people who want to ride. And taking them to where they want to go. Apparently that's a criminal act in places like Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's not just Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It's places all around the world. Uber's ho- uh, head office in France and I believe it was I think South Korea. I, one of the um, – either South Korea or Hong Kong uh, was raided by the police. The uh, two heads in France are facing criminal charges in court from what I understand. So Uber's under fire in a lot of places and that's because they're innovators. They've come into the transportation marketplace and have shaken things up. They have disrupted the classic way of doing business in that world, which is to go and beg permission from the some government agency for some kind of permission slip to go out and to be able to take people places. And you shouldn't have to do that. You, you, no, no cabbie should have to do that. No tra- taxi cab company should have to do that. But these guys are so buried in the system as it is they don't support freedom, these well, taxi cab companies. They cry safety, right? Like it's always about safety. They mm. don't have the right insurance or whatever the complaint is, and who knows what it is in any given circumstance. But re- what they really want is the status quo. Yeah. They're the candlestick makers complaining about the light bulb. Pretty much. They don't want to compete because what competition means is you have to disrupt your business uh, offering. Things have to change. You've got so, to change to co- to compete with the uh, the newbies. In why town, would sure. they want to change to compete? They don't. They would. Mu- it's much easier to just regulate them out of existence than it is to change to compete. And I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Taxi Cab Driver out there, uh, I, your companies, the companies you work for, are going to have to change in the next decade. And here's a surprise for you: so are all the other companies yeah. out there. There isn't an industry where change doesn't happen. Yes, I know it didn't happen very much in taxi cabs. Yeah, you can't really tell me what the innovation in taxi cabs was in the last few decades pr- prior to Uber. But credit now cards. the time has come. Yeah, you can probably sw- yep, swiping credit cards. That's a pretty good one. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> um, but now there's a big one on the yeah. way. And this is it. We're all going to get better service. We're going to be able to get around uh, better. We're if going we can win this. If if the Uber people can survive this they onslaught. They can't stop this. Well, they certainly can't stop it because what we're going to see ultimately is further decentralization of ride-sharing services. I mean, you can use bit- Bitcoin-based blockchain technology to essentially create a Uberless Uber yep. where there is no central control. They are working on that. And yes. that yeah, they are working on that. So that's the next step. And then it'll be almost completely unstoppable. Uh, sure. Once, once what are you going to do when there's no company to shut down? Exactly. 
Uh, now, to be fair, though, to Uber, I think that it's nice to have them there because, like I said, I went through the process of uh, what's it like to become an Uber driver. I don't expect to be approved because I've got a criminal record, um, which involves unsworn falsification and disorderly conduct, and I imagine that will be disqualifying me. But we'll see. Um, but, you know, in that process, it was actually pretty easy uh, to go through, and I forgot the point I was going to make about the process. So <laughs> I'll come back around to that. But Uber... Uh, I'm sure some people are asking themselves about this unsworn fals falsification. What it was is you were changing your name yeah. um, from your old name to Ian Freeman. That's right. And uh, you didn't fill out their paperwork in the right order, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. So I got a criminal charge because, you know, they want to come after but, me because I'm an they, activist. But the person who did it, um, you know, their their employee who did it and helped you with this, they didn't get anything. Uh, get anything? What do you mean? Time? Like they were going to put if it hadn't been for me testifying for you, oh. I think they'd have sent you to prison for this. I don't think no, they wouldn't have sent me to prison for that. The uh, what did the prosecutor ask for? Um, Was it six months time. or nine months in prison? I can't remember. Jail. 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 Fine. I'm sorry. Jail, not prison. <laughs> Excuse me for the, the mistake. Anyway, uh, Uber driver in, uh, Christopher David has been heading up this. Civil disobedience. It's ongoing, and actually, he wasn't even a uh, he wasn't even really an active driver. He does like IT related stuff for a living. This isn't what he does for a living. It's just something that he was doing in his spare time just to make a little bit of extra cash. And when he heard that the Portsmouth, New Hampshire government was basically outlawing Uber, that's when he decided to really kick this into high gear and to make a point of spending time doing Uber deliveries, Uber driving. And he started a website, freeuber.org, and that is a way that people can go to support what he's doing and sign on and, uh, you know, become an Uber driver as well. He wants to expand the market of Uber drivers in Portsmouth rather than have it contract. And he sees this as sort of a linchpin operation in that if they can stop this Portsmouth law from, uh, you know, from happening, if they can turn it around or whatever, then other cities in New Hampshire will not try to follow in their footsteps. But if Portsmouth gets away with regulating Uber out of business, then other cities might also do the same thing. So this is really an important project that spans beyond what's just happening in in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. So it was this weekend, I believe it was Saturday night, he had his first encounter with a Portsmouth cop, and the Portsmouth cop gave him a finger along the throat, kind of a slitting motion, and told him to kind of to try to tell him to cut it out, like, hey, you can't be around here picking passengers up. The cop informs him that there he could be summoned if he continues to pick passengers up because Chris asks him, well, what if I just keep picking them up anyway? And the cop says, you'll be summoned. And then Chris says, thank you. And the cop, you know, kind of mo goes about his business. So the cop moves on. And that's when the customers come out of the bar. The customers who had called Uber or, you know, had called for the Uber cab. Yep. Uh, and so that's when the bouncer then notices that uh, he's the bouncer then says, hey, he's picking them up anyway. And uh, and then Chris says to him, well, that's right, because, well, up anyway. that's right. That's <laughs> right. The customers Happily. get in there and they, t they tell him, thank you for standing up for what he's doing. Standing up to the police, standing up to the bouncers. The customers love Uber. And then at this I point, I hope in the, the video, customers uh, let the bar uh, owner know that hey, your bouncer is annoying the crap out of us. Have we were getting a, fr a ride from uh, you know a friend that we were sharing yeah. a ride with, and uh, now your bouncer tried to screw it up because it's a status little punk. There have already been posts, fire him. There have already been posts made on the bar's uh, webs or not website, but their Facebook page. Uh, the bar is called the Daniel Street Tavern. And as James Davis, uh, one of the bloggers over at freekeen.com, who actually blogged about this story, he lives out in this area. And uh, as he points out here, taxi services on the seacoast are notoriously slow in responding to customer inquiries and are also known to shut down before the, ball, the bars are even having last call. Oh, so a lot of times you want a cab, they're just not even in business. Uber was filling this. Niche. I can tell you, I called a taxi cab after an accident, and it was like 2001. Uh, no, I'm sorry, maybe I have the uh, 2006 was the first year we had moved here, and the guy said he would come for to pick us up um, in the cold, and he never did. We had to get a tow truck, the tow truck driver, to take us out of there. <laughs> At he least just never the, showed up. With the Uber app, you can actually see where your driver is. You know when they're right. coming. The Uber guy could have uh, would have known where we are on the map too. 
Uh, Uber was filling this niche in the marketplace very nicely until the Portsmouth City Council decided to ban them this summer. This leads to a very dangerous situation for all drivers in the Portsmouth area, giving incentive for more drivers on the road or to more, for more drivers to be on the road while they're impaired. You know, if there's nobody who's going to pick you up who's a cabbie at last call, you're more likely to get into the car. Sure. Uh, it's one thing for a city council to attack the people of Portsmouth. That's pretty much what city councils do, as uh, Davis writes at freekeen.com. But bouncers at private institutions who should theoretically have a vested interest in their customer's safety, it's downright irresponsible. So ultimately, this bouncer was telling these customers, well, he was essentially, he was turning away his own customers. He was upsetting his own clients by trying to pick on them for their choice of how to leave their this establishment. These customers are trying to leave your establishment after presumably having a good time drinking at this establishment, and you just called the cops on the, the person who was coming to pick them up? That's not going to engender good customer relations from those people in the future. No, you don't call no, the sorry. cops on your customers. That's just like rule number one. But, you know, these are small places. We're, we're in New Hampshire. Portsmouth is a city of uh, 40,000 people or something like that. It's a relatively small city, uh, all things considered. And so, I, you know, I found myself wondering, okay, who is this bouncer? Rich Paul and I were talking about this. What are the odds? I'd say they're pretty good, as Rich pointed out, that this bouncer is actually an off-duty cop. Because I imagine there are a number of Probably off-duty cops yeah. who moonlight as bouncers. So that's a fu- that's a possibility. And also, in a place like you know New Hampshire, everybody knows everybody else. So as I pointed out, uh, James Davis left a comment on the bar's Facebook page about how they were putting their customers in danger and you know why is your bouncer behaving in this way, that kind of thing. And that's a good thing to do, I think. I think customers should give feedback. But ultimately, if the guy who owns the bar is a total statist, it won't make any difference. If the guy who owns the bar is a former cop or you know, a, a supporter of the city council or a former city councilor, as some of these people are uh, in, these, in places like this, sure. uh, then he's not going to care what you have to say. And all of a sudden, you'll start to see that the activists in Portsmouth will find themselves with enemies. And this is the heat that we get a lot here in the Keene area for some of the activism that has gone on here, including the civil disobedience is, oh, people don't like you in Keene. Well, guess what? The cabbies don't like you in Portsmouth now, and neither does this, if, if this is a status bar owner, neither does he and his employees, and they're not going to appreciate that you're comment, commenting on their Facebook page. So if you wanted some enemies, and just yelled. go out and start doing some, uh, you know, some activism. We'll see you tomorrow. It's freetalklive.com. Current. A civilian casualty is flattered to have been mistaken for a Hamas leader, and an asexually reproduced sea sponge is worried she's turning into herself. This news summary is best enjoyed in a state of leisurely repose. So sit back, relax, and let the waves of condensed news gently lap at your brain. This is the Onion Week in Review. Hoping to foster a lifelong connection to the airline, Delta announced the launch of its official alumni magazine, Flown, this week, a quarterly publication for people who have been passengers with the airline at some point in the past. A press release from Delta confirmed that the magazine will feature obituaries, wedding announcements, and profiles of prominent flyers that celebrate the shared experiences and interests of the airline's 900 million alumni. I think it's a nice thing for Delta to do. I mean, it's always interesting to just skim through an issue, see what the old boarding group's up to. It kind of makes me nostalgic for the few hours back when I was on that flight to Tampa. Simpler days. This is the Onion News Network. If you have a business, you know that IT can be frustrating, but it doesn't have to be. IT can serve your needs reliably, predictably, and on time. Rootwork Infotech helps businesses achieve always-on reliability. Their nerds know business and can meet your needs. To prove it, they'll give you 30 minutes on the phone with a senior consultant for free to answer any of your IT questions. Just go to rootwork.it slash FTL to get your free call. That's R-O-O-T work.it slash FTL. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM.
The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.99 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,166 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $248. And Howar.com reports, as with most high-profile militant leaders, Caliph Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi of the Islamic State has had his share of claimed deaths and claimed mortal woundings at the hand of various forces he is at war with. His fate is once again uncertain as the Iraqi military claims it hit a the Islamic State convoy in which he was traveling. According to a statement from the Iraqi military, forces struck the convoy in the far west of the Anbar province and that Baghdadi was heading to a meeting in Karbala. They claim the meeting itself was also attacked, killing several unnamed the Islamic State officials. Iraqi officials say they are uncertain of Baghdadi's condition and that he was carried away from the site of the strike in a vehicle. The Pentagon also issued a statement saying they can't confirm any reports of Baghdadi being killed or even wounded in the attack. The oft-reported demise of Baghdadi has raised a lot of questions about how much his death or incapacitation would really matter to the Islamic State. And Analysts have suggested the Islamic State has a very deep bench of potential leaders, which explains why a large number of slain the Islamic State leaders have not amounted to much. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a retired FBI agent and a prosecutor released independent reports ruling the shooting death of 12-year-old Tamir Rice by Cleveland police as justified ahead of a grand jury decision. The reports were prepared for Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Timothy J. McGinty. A grand jury will decide if a police officer and his partner will face criminal charges over the death of Tamir Rice. Tamir was shot to death while playing with a pellet gun in a Cleveland park last November. Responding to a 911 call about a guy with a pistol that was probably fake, police officer Timothy Lohman fired several shots at Rice two seconds after arriving on the scene. In June, a Cleveland judge found probable cause for murder charges, involuntary manslaughter, reckless homicide, negligent homicide, and dereliction of duty after conducting a non-binding legal review of the case against Lohman and his partner Frank Garmbach. Colorado prosecutor Lamar Sims, senior chief deputy district attorney in Denver, said that Lohman's decision was objectively reasonable. Sims wrote in his report, there can be no doubt that Rice's death was tragic and indeed, when one considers his age, heartbreaking. However, I conclude that Officer Lohman's belief that Rice posed a threat of serious physical harm or death was objectively reasonable, as was his response to that perceived threat. An attorney for Tamir Rice's family accused the experts of being pro-police and attempting to whitewash Tamir's death. The Rice family has continuously said police acted too quickly without properly assessing the situation after arriving on scene. Scene. Are you an advocate for free market money? Do you promote Bitcoin as an alternative in a fiat-centric world? Then you need Spend a Bit in your arsenal. The search engine for things you can buy with Bitcoin. Spend a Bit aggregates millions of products from thousands of Bitcoin-enabled merchants. Keep your money in the free economy. Visit spendabit.co today. Bitcoin merchants ask about our merchant suite to reach even more customers. Spendabit.co. Reuters reports California will ban public schools from naming their sports teams Redskins, a name seen as a slur against Native Americans. However, the state will not stop municipalities from naming parks and buildings after Confederate heroes. Advocates for Native Americans welcomed the decision to ban the term Redskins. California is the first state in the nation to enact a statewide ban on the term, although individual school districts in Houston, Texas and Madison, Wisconsin have already done so. In another racially sensitive 
sensitive area. However, California Governor Jerry Brown vetoed a bill to ban naming public property after Confederate heroes. Brown, who last year signed a bill outlawing the sale of faux Confederate currency at the state capitol gift shop, said local decision makers should choose names for schools and parks. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. A report released this week by the Brookings Institution found that the U.S. currently has enough chairs and that there is no urgent need to produce any new ones for the time being. Researchers confirmed through overwhelming evidence that there is absolutely no shortage